Hello and welcome, my friends. Hello, episode nine. Oh my god, we're at episode nine. You don't, this isn't context for know. you. This is mostly for me. Um, the reason this is important is because, so I love all of my children, all of my 32 people who have come before you at this point, but I'm actually really excited about this episode in general. One, because it is the penultimate episode right before the finale, but also because I have some of my favorite people with me. So, Aww, thank you. What an insult to everybody who's come before. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wasn't going to say really anything, sorry. but now that you mention it. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I'm just really happy to be able to have uh, this select group, which uh, people I have played with for many, many years, people <clears throat> who I've very recently been enjoying with for many, many years, people I've been playing with for many, many years, <laughs> and one of my favorite DMs. So, <laughs> in your face. Absorb their DM power. Uh, <laughs> Hey, oh, I did. Help me. <laughs> you my, 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 my spoopy, spoopy compadres. So, <laughs> um, we have a story to tell. Ten candles. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> this will be my first time actually dying on stream. Like I, I I've survived one hundred percent of things, including things you yourself threw at me. <laughs> I, I, Today I, I ran out of track. I yeah, spoilers. I can fix that. <laughs> I mean, I guess theoretically I've been dead the entire time. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and to, and to be fair, uh, you said yes. I knew what this was. <laughs> I knew what it was. I'm gonna be the first survivor of ten candles. That is. Uh, I don't think that's true. I think I, just to remind you, you can't win ten candles. <gasps> uh, yeah. This is also hard for me. <laughs> <laughs> All of us on a different way. It would be like, I'm showing up for the sadness game. You're showing up for can't win. You're showing up for gotta die. What What will this break for you? Immortality. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just to feel mortal again. Mm. So it's been so long. Uh, I think uh, the first thing we need to do is uh, spread some virtues across the world. Can everyone take one of your cards and let's pass it to the right? So your right player. Or we, our pictures What's a card? Or, or, your, oh, I'm sorry. So this is probably important. We're going to take a photo, which mm -hmm. will represent your note cards rather than proper note cards. And we're going to take one of your photos and we're going to pass it to the right. Should it be my favorite? It can be whichever one you'd like to have your virtue written upon. You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going blind. I don't... It's going to be what it is. should be that one. We'll let fate, de <laughs> we'll, we'll let fate decide. Yes. Going to the right. Oh. Do virtue. I look at the picture or no? Uh, yes, you can look at the picture. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for asking. And some uh, examples of great virtues? Virtues are usually one-word descriptions. Descriptions. They can be things such as um, uh, perseverance, um, uh, nobility, uh, tenacity. Um, I already spelled it wrong. <laughs> Literacy. We, we all speak Becca. Hmm. Yeah, they're just things that you would wish upon someone. You should play a teacher of some sort, honestly. I think that'd be very <laughs> on brand. <laughs> Funnily enough. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, then let's pass it back to the left to your owner. Thank you. And there look at it or not? Yes. In fact, Jason Carl, why don't you start us off by reading yours first? Ah, oh, this is clever. Inventive. Might be handy. You're very inventive. Inventive. Excellent. And Amy? I have determination. Determination. Or, yeah. I'm determined. You're determined. There it is. Yes, that's where it is. B determination Dave? did. D determ determined. Mm. <laughs> the most the determined. <laughs> uh, you loyalty. Loyalty. So okay. determined. Loyal. Loyal. Inventive. Inventive. And Becca, what did you get? Jog? Joy. Joy! <laughs> I, don't have the best hand, I don't have the best handwriting, it is true. I thought it said jog, too. That is clearly a lie. So I thought, uh, S was my first Is, is jog a virtue? <laughs> Apparently. Maybe. It is now that you're fast. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I take it all back. You're really fast. Oh, well, yeah, that feels right. Joy. So you have some joy. Joyful, okay. Right. And fitting for this photo. Can yeah. we show the photo? Absolutely. It's your photo. I don't know. You consented. Well, no. my butt looks really good. <laughs> it, as something a very joyful person would say. <laughs> my butt looks amazing. It's important. Uh, let's grab another one of your cards. And now this one is going to go to the person to your left. 
don't even know what it is. I imagine it's the opposite of a virtue, so I will give the appropriate photo. <laughs> Absolutely. These are the vices. Mm. I'd like you to write something that you would not wish upon someone, but it's, mm -hmm. that is. More importantly, it is something that creates more problems than it actually solves. Here's my cup. Does it have to be a single word? I mean, I know it's short, but it's... I would Can you hyphenate? I would appreciate a descriptive word. Yes. Yeah. So it can be something such as, um, you know, uh, you know, vicious okay. or, you know, spiteful or... Um, I'm pretty sure it's my turn that I... Uh, I think I spelled that wrong this time. All right. I do words good. I did what the photo told me to do. <laughs> they do speak to us. That's yeah, images these, from the past. Uh -oh. They are <laughs> pictures are worth a thousand words, or in this case, mm -hmm. one word. So. Mm. <laughs> Don't give me like that. This isn't what we think about each other, right? <laughs> Well, you're looking at the photos, but no, this is about who you would like to give to your character, so or the Thank character. Uh, B. Dave, why don't you start us off? What did I, you get? I don't even know what it is. Violent, violence. So violence, violent, loyal, and violent. I mean, it me. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, I'm buying it. <laughs> How about you, Amy? What did you get? I am aggressive. Violent and, and aggressive. aggressive. Uh oh, oh dangerous combination. Determined aggressive. and aggressive. Determined and aggressive. That's how we made it this far. I, I can see how yeah. this is going to go already. <laughs> and how about Poorly. You, how about you, Jason? What did you get? Selfish. Ooh, selfish. Mm. Oh, and how. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, and Becca. Not only am I jog full, I am also manipulative. Ooh. Oh. Mm. Joyful and manipulative. All right. Some good combinations of virtues and vices here. Mm -hmm. um, let me tell you a little bit about the situation that you're in. Now, we did discuss it a little bit beforehand, which is why I'm going to sum it all up in this statement here. We've decided that you are <sighs> situated underground somewhere in the... Where was it? It was the was it Carlsbad. Mexican? Carlsbad in the southwest, right in southwest. New Mexico, the Carlsbad Cavern area. Carlsbad right. Cavern area. So you're basically situated yourself into some natural underground caverns in the Carlsbad area. Seemed like a good idea at the time. Now, at some point, you felt, and there have been earthquakes, frequent, you know, small aftershocks, and things that have happened. But um, there was recently what felt like a large shockwave that came across the entire earth in a uh, sub-atmosphere kind of attitude rather than a, you know, two tectonic plates cracking against each other kind of an attitude. Shortly after that, you felt the big one come across. Now, um, for many who may not be aware, there in Yellowstone is a super volcano that has been lying dormant for centuries? For like 40,000 years. Yeah. Millennia? Yeah, at this stage. And um, it is all it needed. It had somehow managed to survive not erupting at this point, but now you have generated several hundred atomic bombs worth of energy, which have split everything above the ground and have now generated a sulfur cloud that is so thick and so dense that... The only reason you know about it is because there were people who were outside when it came down, and the people who were still above ground are not with you now. Um, you are the last four situated inside of your cavern at the moment. You've managed to live in this pocket of air that is below the settling, but you have absolutely seen the remnants of what you can when it has, when the sulfur dust has settled. You can very visibly see it making its tiny ashen piles outside. And as a result, the world is dark, shrouded in a cloud of sulfuric gas. 
and a lot of the entrances that you were usually used to using to get to the surface have all been drastically disrupted, broken apart, and now you don't know where the hell you are in this place. So with that, let's talk about what moments you would like to generate mm -hmm. inside of this scenario. And a moment is simply something that can be achievable, but also has a chance of failure. Something you hope to happen while the story is being told. So we're going to take another card that has our faces on it, and we will write that on the back of that one. I hear no more scratching, so it sounds like we're all done. Um, in describing these moments, I would also, if you would do me the kindness, first of all, thank you all for playing, by the way. Uh-oh. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, I've, ev I've evaded you several times, so. <laughs> um, but I would love to meet whoever you will be playing today while also revealing your moments as well, too. So, um, Amy, why don't we begin with you? All right, uh... I'm Billy Morris. Uh, my DJ name is was gonna be uh, either Zinnia or Violet, but I hadn't. Uh, I guess all that's pretty far in the past at this point, but there's a lot of stuff I never quite got to do. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to work a lot of odd jobs and like donate plasma and stuff, so I could never I know it sounds really stupid, but I could never get piercings or have tattoos because uh, I was, you know, volunteering for medical experiments a lot for spare cash. Uh, and uh, so, I mean, we're all screwed anyway, right? Um, I want to get a tattoo. Okay, awesome. Mm -hmm. um, professional lab rat, hopeful DJ. DJ, yeah. Now wanting to just get that last bit of counterculture culture on your skin. Yeah. Why Great. Not? And how about you, B. Dave? Who are you playing today? My name is Boone. Boone. Just Boone. I am a survivalist. Mm -hmm. I've been preparing for some time for these events. And now I've made my way across a dark and desolate earth mm -hmm. to find my way here amongst these people. And Boone, what moment do you hope to generate in this story today? I would like to witness repentance right. in the midst of the judgment that is being handed down on saint and sinner alike. Great. You would like to see someone repent? I would. Becca? I'm Eliza Winter. Eliza Winter. I used to teach pre-K. I really loved it. I also just love music and concerts. It's kind of my thing. Just, I'm just a music fan. I'm not a musician or anything. I just love... Uh, sometimes I travel. I would used to. And... Um, Anyway, I just love that, that feeling when you're in just a throng of people and you're all feeling the same thing and experiencing something together that's touching a deep part of your soul. I mean, not like in the mall, but in a crowd where everyone is one for a moment. You want to be part, I see where this is going. This is that moment where you're all experiencing something together and you're all on the same wavelength. Yeah, but just with with a big group of people. I don't even think that's possible anymore. 
But I want to be surrounded by a crowd of people one last time. You want to be in a crowd. Okay. Mr. Carl. Mm. Uh, my name is Ethan. Ethan Daly. And for most of my adult life, I was a journalist. An investigative reporter, most recently. So I told myself that I dedicated my life to the search for truth. And I spent a lot of time in difficult and sometimes dangerous situations looking for what I thought would be the truth, hoping that people would read about it and it would matter. And what I found in my search for truth is that it's a lot harder to find than anybody thinks mm. because everybody lies. Right. They lie reflexively. They lie when they don't have to lie just because the compulsion is so strong to conceal that inner inner honesty. So what I want is I want to see someone be really honest. Hmm. I want to see a moment of genuine honesty. You want to see some real before honesty. this whole thing rips apart. Got it. All right. Well, <clears throat> Ethan Eliza Billy and Boone with the E crowd. <laughs> and we have the B crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <clears throat> this is, uh, the final thing we have to touch upon before we dive into our story is Sorry. the Brinks. Mm. The Brinks are, it's okay, you can put that there, that's fine. I'm gonna put that right back there, it's okay. Um, the, uh, the Brinks are a dark moment. Mm. It is something that you have witnessed in someone else that has been the lowest point of which they can achieve. And... The book is very clear on a couple of examples on this. There are such things as, um, I saw you kneel down and pray to them. No one thought they were looking, but I saw you. Or it can be something as simple as, I watched you kill a local in the area. And it can be something also as esoteric and simple as, I've seen you muttering words that were not human. And these are all things that you will take one of your mm. pictures now, and we are going to hand it to the left. Mm. So you're going to pass it to your person on your right. Yes. No, Brinks go left. We're gonna pass it to the left. Mm. Now the good news is, for these Brinks, I get to participate <laughs> oh dear. in this whole process. Oh good. So, um, and let me hand yours over. Uh, Boone, I will take yours, and I'm going to write something of which they have seen you. The proverbial them has witnessed something upon you, which I will write to you. At the same time, Miss Eliza you will write a truth about them, a brink of which you have gone into. This is an opportunity to expand upon what has already been built in this. And when I say them, I do mean everything from the proverbial creatures we're talking about, the them that has come up. But this can also result in the moon, the supervolcano, these monoliths, these 100-story spires that have pursed out from the ground. They are all on the table for you in which to write as something that you have seen them do or react or say. What has Eliza witnessed in that regard? <clears throat> is, it I, I, is it written as I saw you or I saw them? Um, well, in your circumstance, it can literally be I have seen you, and in your circumstances, I have seen them. And in mine, it is they have seen you. So mine's flip. Can you explain what I do that's different? You're going to write something that Eliza has seen them commit. The creatures? The creatures, the moon, the monoliths, the earth. Whatever you feel like is going to add to the story that you 
Well, find interesting. So they witnessed me stocking lots of food and ammunition in this very cave. Mm. <laughs> that was the easiest one so far. <laughs> I don't think that's necessarily a good thing. <laughs> I do not. <laughs> I do not. All right. I don't mean to be too meta, but is something like that acceptable? If you can read my writing? It's totally fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> More jogging? <laughs> Inevitably. <laughs> it is a virtue. Good cardio. <laughs> Great. Let's pass it back. Let me know if you have trouble reading that. I'll translate it. Well, do we read these? You read them. No one else should see them. They are for you. And to be fair, when they wrote them for you, your character has observed this person do this thing. I bet that was easy for you. <laughs> Thank you. Excellent. All right. We have our brinks. And we have our moments. And we have our virtues and our vices. The last thing to do is to now create a stack in which your virtues, your vices, and your moments can be in any order you wish. But just know that whatever is on top is what you are able to activate first in the game. Your virtues and your vices will allow you to reroll any ones that may come as a result of the dice. Your moment can only occur should your moment be on top. And your brinks, should you get to them, can be used to do an entire reroll of all of the dice. However, should it fail, it will remove any hope dice that you may have earned, and it will snuff the candle immediately. However, if you succeed, you may use your brink time and time again. I so, noticed that we have one left. That is for your name. That is for your concept. That is your character cheat sheet, if you wish. So, I shuffled them and let fate decide. So You said right. any order, right? Any order you wish. Virtues, vice, and moments. That was a name, concept, and what else, sorry? Whatever you need to help you remind you who you are and what you are. To begin. I, yes. I apologize. What was written about us? Does that also go in the stack, or is that just the brink that always goes on the bottom? Um, oh, ah. Okay. The brink always must be on the bottom. Okay. It just so happens it, it was. It is the it is the last desperate attempt. Uh, no, I mean the thing that was written about us. Does that go in the stack, or this is that is just your, something we know? This is the brink of which I wrote for you. Oh, that's that. Okay. That's the brink. That okay. goes on the bottom. All right. Sorry. Yes. It's all right. So, you are all 
currently laid up inside of a small cave system in the south western part of the country. You recently heard several people come back after a large explosion had gone off shortly after a smaller tremor had awoken. I would say it's been a few short hours since the super volcano erupted at this point and you're actually still nursing one of the men who came back from this explosion at some point. His throat was raw and red from inhaling the sulfuric gas and it slowly these small welts started coming out and only a few short minutes ago did he asphyxiate and finally succumb to his grievous wounds in this cave structure and well that's all you know for now what do you want to do can't leave that corpse around here need to get rid of it like what do you, where I mean, look at them marks. We don't know what's wrong with him. And he's going to fester and rot. I don't want to be smelling that stink in the last pocket of good air God knows how far. We should bury him somewhere. We should give him a proper, proper burial. Somebody loved him. Stone, darling. Can't dig too deep right here. Can we kind of... You know? Can we use the fallen rocks to bury him? <laughs> said this about a million times already, but this sucks. <laughs> <laughs> it really sucks. Can we maybe take him as far as we can go and leave him? I don't know. Yeah. I don't even know how far out of the cave mouth we can get now. Probably not very, but yeah, let's drag him a ways, and then miss, we'll make a pile, a can to remember him by. Okay. Her yeah. name's Eliza. Miss Eliza. <laughs> That's what the kids called me. <laughs> Will you assist me, sir? Yeah, let's go. I do rummage through his pockets for anything of value first. He don't need it no more. Well, you did know him at one point, and like many of you, it was um, it was a, a bit of a bit of a lone heart. <laughs> And I would probably say even one of the last of the festival goers that you were with originally. So he had some cut off cargo shorts and a sleeveless shirt that was good for desert, desert fun. I think he held me up when I crowd surfed. Probably. But more importantly, he's dead now. So why don't you rummage through his pockets for me and see if you can find anything of value. For all of these? All of them. Yes, all you need is a six. But any ones will become mine. Okay. Wow, no sixes. And a one. And one one. Uh, there is an option to re-roll this if you'd like to use your virtues and vices. Otherwise, this scene is going to end immediately. And we will go to nine candles. Reroll. What are the possible negative repercussions of re-rolling? Either we, we lose a candle now, but if I roll and it goes poorly, what? You will still lose a candle. The difference is, is that if this becomes a six, the scene will still continue, and you will not go down to nine dice. You will still continue with ten dice moving forward. So Otherwise, we end the scene, we will speak nine truths, and the scene and the story will continue. First roll, uh, I'm amazed. <laughs> it's going well. But, well. So your one is on top. Yes. You said violent is the ones on top, right? Yes. So you would need to tell me how your violent nature applies to the situation. So are you being a little unceremonial with this body at this point? I mean, he can't feel it no more, so yeah, I don't care. Get him by the arm and just yank on the shirt. Get it off of him, man. Stop. Like, I don't know what he's got hidden in oh, here. Come on. Just, I mean, like, <sighs> his little... problems are over, all right? Is this what you're going to do to all of us? Yeah, ah, cool it. A little respect. I would expect you to do the same for me. Well, you'd be wrong. <laughs> One. Um, 
Mm. No more helping, Boone. Ah. So you rummage through him. And you find nothing of value. In fact, if anything, you have just defiled this corpse even more. Since he has recently died, his... Well, let's, let's just say that when people die, they tend to lose all bodily functions. <sighs> and they tend to evacuate their bowels. <sighs> and that is currently what you are shifting around right now as you're trying to maneuv maneuver and manipulate him out of his personal effects. Ugh, Jesus. Right. Damn it. It's Ugh. disgusting. Jeez. Nine candles, nine dice, nine truths. So, Boone, just so you know how this works is you get to speak a truth about the world, about the story right now. We don't have a whole lot to go off of at this point, but this is an opportunity for you to decide something that is in this world that is true. The first and always rule is that it is dark. The world is dark. But since you failed this conflict role, you get the first truth. Does it have to be objectively true or just something that I myself believe? This is both, you can use this to skip ahead in time, if you wish, to resolve. You can use this to create conflict. You can use this to tell the best story that you think is possible in this circumstance with a single truth. This old boy didn't go out alone. It was three or four of them that made it. If he even got back here, it's because he ran to save his own hide. So you're saying, and if I hear the truth correctly, your truth is... He died a coward. He died a coward. This, so that is your truth. This man died a coward. He brought something back with him. Eliza. The world is dark. He brought back a piece of one of them. Okay. It's still wriggling in his pocket. You brought back a piece of them, is what you're true. He did. He did, yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Ethan. Right, one, two, three, four. The world is dark. This man died a coward. He brought back a piece of them. The piece of them is making noise. It's making itself apparent, right? Billy. Uh the world is dark. This man died a coward. He brought back a piece of them. It's making itself apparent. And one of the people he left behind is still out there in the caves. In the caves. Right. Boone. Seven. The world is dark. This man died a coward. He brought something back. A piece of them that is making noise. Yet he left someone behind. They followed them back to these caves. They did. They did. Right. I've never done this before. I like this cascading. <laughs> uh, the world is dark. This man died a coward. He brought a piece of them back with them. It's making noise. He left people behind, and he has brought them with them. There is a complex cave system underneath you, leading into the mountains. Eight, Eliza. The world is dark. This man died a coward. He brought something back with him. It was a piece of them. That piece is now making noise. And there was someone else There's someone that he left behind. And... They have followed them back here. Oh, they followed. 
them back here into this complex series of caves that lead to a mountain. Mm -hmm. What is number eight? What is the truth? They know we're here, and they're taunting us. They haven't come in? Or they just, they're just they just taunting you? Is that what you're saying? Mm-hmm. Great. They're taunting you. Which leaves you with the final one, Ethan. For the world is dark. And this poor man died a coward. He brought back a piece of them. And that piece is making noise, making itself apparent. But he left someone out there behind, and that someone has brought them back with them to this place, which is on top of a complex cave system. They have not entered, but are taunting us. cave system leads to a lake. Great. Cave system leads to a lake. Nine candles, nine truths have been spoken. We pick this scene up. It sounds like pretty much right where we left off mm -hmm. with Boone violently shaking this man who has excavated his bowels at this point. <sighs> but in the shaking you actually hear a wet slap as something falls onto the ground, and you see a small, almost banana-sized piece, just like a, like a giant slug, almost, that just kind of falls onto the ground. And you drop him, and you drop the man as soon as you lay into ah. it. And you kind of watch as this thing, rather than move slow like a slug, or just get up, and it starts skittering right onto the body and starts climbing right up into it and lodges itself right into this man's mouth. The fuck? Kill it, Boone! Smash it with Good. a rock. Good. Smash it with a rock? Smash it with a rock. Ha! Huh. Oh. Mm. That is very I'll successful. take that one one. Uh, there's no way I can assume narrative control over this point, so Billy, take it away. <laughs> That's a lot of sixes. That is, a, that is five sixes. Uh, I, with the look, what is wrong with you? I, I scoop up one of the rocks in the corner, um, and I, it was start, starting was, to go in his mouth, it right? basically had pried its mouth open with these tiny tendrils that had lifted itself up, and it took each one of its his gums and started prying his mouth apart and was slipping it's down like into smiling. his mouth. I want to so. get it like a like a horrifying golf swing, like Try to flop sideways it across, uh, splat it against the, the cave wall if right. I can. So you whack it and you kind of hit it sidelong, not smashing this man's face in, but instead just trying to dislodge the creature out of it. And you do, you, your, your, your putting distance is perfect as you kind of whack it across the side and you watch as this thing <laughs> kind of slides out of his mouth, but you see it takes a huge part of his lip with him as it kind of comes out and rolls onto the cave floor wrong. And it's now kind of on its back in like a cent and kind of like a roly poly of centipede. It's attempting to curl itself back up onto uh, its uh, stomp on it, crush it. Yeah. So Ethan, you just walk over and just stomp on it. <laughs> you stomp on it repeat and you hear it squeals. It's loud for something so small. It's just <laughs> And you watch as like black icor just oh splash. god die already, and it lays still. And actually, you watch it curl up like when a spider lifts its legs after it's dead, and it just sits there and mocks over onto its side. Are you okay, Eliza? What the hell is it, <laughs> Eliza? What is okay? I I know a thing or two about the natural world. Does this bear any resemblance to anything I've ever seen? Do you hear that? What? Which you hear, and as you're kind of not terribly close to the cave entrance, but you can definitely hear singing. Singing? A sound like it's like like music, like the radio, like an instrument. Or no. no, I mean like more like the crying howl of thousands of voices that are 
erupting into a shrieking chorus. Oh, good. Of sounds. singing. It sounds like many voices together. Feels echo. Making a joyful noise unto the Lord. <laughs> I don't think that's what they're doing. Boone, what are you talking about? There's nothing joyful in this world anymore. I think it's joyful. Uh, this is retribution. Judgment that we brought upon ourselves and we are here to witness. Okay. Excuse me? Okay. What's wrong with you? Everyone I ever have known is dead. Everyone I've loved, everyone I've, I've taught, everyone, they're all dead. They were all going to die eventually anyway. Just the timeline has been shortened. Not like this. Not without living a life. It doesn't really matter why. It's not helpful. Well, perhaps we can agree that maybe we shouldn't stay here before the chorus line arrives. You well, want to tear some more bodies up before we go? You got any other laying around? Awesome. Where is it? Let's see where this cave goes. Would you like to go into the deep cave system deeper? So, the challenge, but also the boon, sorry, um, of Gaia going deeper is that the air is clear, it is cleaner, it is not so abrasive as it is this close to the surface. But it is dark. It is oh so very dark. And your time up on the surface briefly was actually basked in beautiful illuminating light. It's hard to call it beautiful when literally the moon takes up the entire horizon, which is what you last saw before the super volcano erupted. But it is dark. And the, well, do you have any kind of lighting instrumentation at this point? Or are we stumbling through the cave system black as night? I have some glow sticks in my backpack. Those. From from the concert, from the festival? Mm -hmm. I would have had a light in my bug out bag if I've still got my bug out bag. I'm going to go with the festival glow sticks. Okay. It seems so much more poetic. I've got the headbands, I've got the wristbands, and then just the sticks. So well. there's a single, single head beam, which one person can wear. And then you have some several chemical fluorescent sticks that can be broken that are um, one-time use. So who's going to go in front with the head beam? Oh, it's an actual head torch? Yep. We're going to do a head torch. I got it. Just because I didn't know. Sometimes you have to find the bathroom. Here. Okay, I've only got four glow sticks. That's fine. Maybe we should ration them. Maybe person. One at a time, maybe. You had a lot more, but it has also been a very long fraught three weeks filled with death-defying adventures. Absolutely. Uh, uh, whoever wants to take up the rear should probably take one. I'll do it. Okay. Here. So Great. Billy's going in front. Ethan I'll takes the rear. glow stick and break it. I'd like to put it together. What color is it? Uh, it's about as bright as a half-dead firefly. So, uh, Blue? Blue yeah. seems like a color that Eliza might have had. Mm -hmm. Right. So you have Very cheerful. Right? It has this uh, blueberry neon blue. Mm. So it kind of carries you in the back. And it is, it almost, with the illumination it's providing, it actually almost has this rippling water effect as it hits upon the wet walls of this cave, which is becoming more truncated as you go deeper and deeper into the cave system. Is it wrong that I think this would be a great spot for a rave? Absolutely, it would be. <laughs> We can have a rave. I think they're already having one back out there. Can we still hear that that keening, that the the wailing freakish noise? The chorus is dwindling as you get deeper into the cave systems. Okay. But it also is starting to just have that odd echo as if it just is sitting just ever so slightly in the back of your brain. Not quite in that presence of your senses picking it up, but it just seems to be there. It's hard to forget. Um, Does this seem like an equivalent number of voices of our former companions or more people? Uh, I don't know, Boone, what do you think? I think it's more people. Okay. Then if it sounds more than what you remember, and to be fair, the festival that you both saw as part of this, that was weeks ago. 
it's been almost well, subjectively about three weeks. You don't actually know how much time has passed because the days and night cycles are so fraught and irregular now. But subjectively, it has been definitely more than a couple of weeks, for sure. Almost a lifetime ago at this point. Many lifetimes. I just don't remember how it used to be. It's okay. The little food that you have left is what you carry with you as you go into the cave system, and it's mercifully open for a while. Can I tell you guys a secret? Sure. What do you want to talk? I'm so hungry <laughs> that when... Not much of a secret. I can hear your stomach growl. That's not the secret part. Oh, okay. I don't want to tell it. <laughs> You thought about eating that bug? Just for a second. <laughs> not the bug. Oh, not the bug. Anyway, never mind. Yeah, <laughs> we might. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we find some I wouldn't. Pets. I would never. I'd sooner die. It might come it to that. just crossed my mind. It might come to that. I, no. I wouldn't. We can find some bats down here. Cook them up over a campfire. Oh, my mm. God. A bat meat sounds delicious. <laughs> kind of. Leathery, crunchy, but yeah, I'd eat it. Yeah, beef jerky. I was vegetarian, but I'd kill for beef jerky. Oh, stop talking about food, please. Okay. Let hey. me, let me, let me, let me ask y'all as we make our way through here. You know, where y'all from? Phoenix. Didn't make it far. Back east. Ain't I don't even now. Don't. Well, how do you know? We don't know what's out there. I don't. I mean, for all we know, if we could get out of here and just keep on walking in one direction, we might find anything. Civilization. Well, we could choke to death. Or we could choke to death. Yeah. But we don't know. Is the point? I mean, we don't know where this cave comes out. It might be the other side of the world. That's true. It's got to be better than there. Wait, you're from the East Coast, but what were you doing in New Mexico? Hmm. I was writing a uh, investigative piece on doomsday preppers, <sighs> people who were preparing for the end. And rightly so. You know, the fact that you're right doesn't make it any better. So enjoy that. <laughs> it's the only joy I got. Are you were working on this? No, not 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 what happened. I mean, we, I was doing a piece on people who were preparing for, you know, the apocalypse. People like me. The irony. I assume it was a very sarcastic article that you were writing. Might have won me another prize. And yeah, you're right. I, the tone I had chosen was a little bit contemptuous. <laughs> what? Now what? Kind of here as a small flutter of bats just hey. kind of finds its way through. A duck. All right. And then they kind of come out. A duck go, behind Boone. They go lay eggs in your hand. Meals on wing. <laughs> And uh, you kind of um, kind of watch them as they kind of flutter by, and they go out towards the entrance in which you came in at. But it's can you catch really them. cook those? If you want to grab one, now is the time because yeah. they're they're coming out. So. Give it a shot. You sling a main stone. <laughs> I mean, they's got meat on them. That means they's can be. Well, we didn't see right. any bats up there. They had to come from somewhere. <laughs> okay. Yeah. If you want to go for it, I mean, Billy, sure. by all means. Do it, Billy. You can do it. <laughs> In the mood to hit something anyway. I believe in you. <laughs> okay, two ones, no sixes. Wow. Do you want to re-roll? Do I don't think it's worth it. Option three. to re-roll. Three, two, Even one. Even one re-roll. One. No. Okay. Uh, uh, wow. Okay. Uh, Billy, it's you. And you chuck it at where you hear the sound where you can be. You kind of hear it quack, 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 against the walls, and you kind of hear it as it splits, quack, and you hear it as the bass continue to squeak as they kind of make their way through uh, the cave. Damn. But you don't hear the telltale sound of anything falling to the ground. And you, after this moment of which you hear it clatter, you start to feel the ground begin to shake. Another tremor. <laughs> Hold on. After shock. And thus are a scene ends. Eight candles. 
I should have made an athlete. <laughs> Would have been the same dive pool anyway. <laughs> True. You burned up all your luck on that first one. Uh, but you saved this from a zombie thing. So probably, maybe. Eight candles, eight truths. Billy, um, you speak the first truth, please. First, the world is dark. And I don't know if we need to do the round robin. Yeah, it takes time. a while. <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was fun. It was a fun experiment. But. Uh, the world is dark dark and the headlamp definitely flew off while I was trying to catch that bat. No! Excellent. Alright. Boone. The world is dark. And there is not enough oxygen in these caves for four people. Alright. Not long term at least. The lake that this cave system connects to is underneath you, and the tremor will expose it. What? The world is dark. And... I push Ethan to get out of the way as <laughs> the ground starts to open up. All right. <laughs> you shove Ethan out of the way. That is the truth. To use his body to propel myself further from the opening that's okay. happening. Ethan. So I'm shoved, I stumble, I fall, and my hand strikes something soft and yielding mm. a body. Someone has been here before us. Great. Five. Six. Um, can I... Can the lake have a faint bioluminescent glow? Or does it violate the, the rules to put light back in the world? It is not a huge amount of light. Yeah. It is enough to give it... <laughs> Toxicity. <laughs> yeah, it's maybe glowing. Is no, bad. We to don't know. give it bioluminescence is perfectly fine. Oh, like a little plankton. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, that would put us back at six, which means that Boone, you have number seven. The world is dark, and this body is wearing military fatigues. Ah, mm. great. Um, I'll take that. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Uh, now you have to. There's a research lab at the edge of the lake. Open up. Eight candles, eight truths. We move this scene forward immediately. Lisa, you just shove Ethan out of the way. Hey! Oh, the lamp! I'm hey. sorry! And the lamp kind of clatters, and you actually watch it bounce as oh. the light comes out as a crack just, just oh. clips no. on the God cross. damn it, damn kind of it. Watch as the oh. earth splits across, and you hear as it tumbles down, and you watch for a brief moment as you hear a splash just boom, as you look down and see the spiraling light of the headlamp just kind of cascade and swirl down oh. on now this broken causeway that is about the, the size of a panhole. Sorry. I think we should go get it. We or maybe the person that was wearing it? 
Makes as much sense as anything else. I don't know if I can even fit through there. Even what as you fall down and you feel this unyielding, cushioning thing on top of you, as when you kind of see in the low amount of blue light that you hold onto, you can see camo fatigues onto it, and you feel a hand lift itself up and it grabs your shoulder <gasps> ah! as it pulls you alter it, and you can see this cold white eyes as something is gurgling inside of it, and you hear. You can feel him grasping his hands around your throat. <laughs> you hear Ethan cry out and begin to choke. Do I still have my knife? Uh, at this point, I mean, you had a few things with you. I would allow a knife as something that can fit in your pockets, so yes. I assume I'm long since out of bullets, but I feel like I would have this from my cold dead hands here. Right, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to desecrate no soldier, but I got to stab this old boy to save him. Stab him! Stab him! <laughs> stab him! Stab him! Oh, yeah. Mm. Ooh, wow. Oh, it hit. Mm-hmm. The, the, it, did, I, it, it wasn't its original rule. That's true. It was not its original uh, state, but that's fine. It wasn't, but I will take it anyway. It's fate is, if it had turned to a six, I'd have kept uh, it. So typical, that's typical, fate is fate. Typical. So Three sixes. Yes, and I think at this point it's the first roll of the scene, so I cannot take narration rights even if I wanted to. Please, mm-hmm. Boone, tell me what happens. As this thing reaches up and grabs my associate, Uh I plunge my knife into his chest just under the ribs, Uh and I feel it hit an organ I am not familiar with. Well, actually, more importantly, what you feel is you put in there, that organ that you are not familiar with is wiggling inside of its body. Give it a satisfying twist. twist. And you hear a loud screech kind of emanating from inside of his chest cavity, and you hear it. It's like... (laughs) sound again as you kind of feel this thing wiggle inside of it. It's almost like something's trying to get away from your blade. And as you pull it out, you see the black red of oxidized blood and then a small amount of black ichor as you pull it out. And this man, whoever it had holding on to you, slackens his grip (laughs) as he pulls it down. You okay? Thank you. Well. I'm so sorry. I just it, when it opened, I just I got scared. It's all right. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. What? what? Who was that? How did it do that? I mean, it tried to climb down the other old boy's throat. I guess that's what happens. Oh, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm so glad you have that terrifying knife. <sighs> terrifying time. Oh, it Leo. sucks. Yeah. Where? I'm happy you're here, Boone. As crazy as that is. I cleaned the knife on the guy. <laughs> Where the <laughs> Where'd the light go? We got this blue thing. Yeah, mm. I dropped it down the thing. Oh, I'm gonna shine the light down there. You can actually still see a tiny glisten of the light, but oh. it seems to have dropped all the way down. But oh boy, <coughs> is the water clear. Water? <gasps> I'm so thirsty. We could maybe refill our canteens. Oh, and I think I'm out of purification tablets, ma'am. I don't know if that's wise. How far We're gonna down? die if we don't get water. I'm. Is there a way to, are there like rocks, the path maybe? So like I mentioned, it's a manhole. Yeah. It's kind of there. So there seems to be a small air pocket that's right above it, but you basically, it cracked open a hole enough to where you could kind of slip in to it if you wanted to, but how it's just far? How far in between us oh, and the water? I would say, oh, from you in the water? Mm. Oh, mere feet. Like, oh. yeah, you could you could very easily like dip your body down and get water. So it's a light in the water. Lights in the water about ten feet down. Eliza yeah. kind of shamed me about it, so uh, I'm gonna start trying to wriggle towards that hole. Whoa, 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 wait, wait a second, wait a second. What? What are you doing? I dropped it in the water. It's well, right there. Well, let, hang on. Let's let's, probably... let's make sure we can get you back out. Yeah. I'd... Maybe. Um, you want to rope? Know. I'm gonna take. We don't have any rope, but I'll take my shirt off and somebody give me a shirt and we'll. <laughs> I take this. I start taking the soldier's fatigues and start yeah. knotting that together. Yeah. <laughs> them together and make a. I saw this. Oh my gosh! I practiced once. this. I this is what I taught my kids in arts and crafts. You taught <laughs> improvised knots. rope making in hellish well, situations. We were sewing. I used to sew on my own clothes. Is <laughs> it's a Montessori. <laughs> what is? <this? sighs> She's got a lot of skills. A word of warning, ma'am. Uh, I don't know how familiar you are with water, but past 10 feet, it all looks the same. That could be 10 feet or 50. Oh. 
Yeah, if well, you can't if grab you can it at swim, the end, swim, it's okay, right? If you can't grab it at the end of the line, don't. Yeah, it's not worth you to get it back. All right. Is anything like nothing else is moving in the water, right? You don't in the see anything. in the yeah. in the time that you've taken to have this conversation while looking at it, um, there is a small seems to be a glow oh. coming down from there. I'll hide the glow stick. From it's still I... glowing. Whoa. There's a tiny little, almost, <laughs> if I may be so bold, um, have you ever, like, seen those eclectic house shows in which they've had cave swimming pools yeah. in there sure. and how they have some of the floodlights that tend to just light up the pool so it gives that iridescent glow? It's really pretty. It is. It would be an amazing place for Rave. And it's more importantly, it's so familiar. It's almost offsetting because it does look like something that you would see in an underground pool. I just want to jump in. Smell? Do we smell anything at all? I mean, chlorine, sulfur, salt, anything, mildew, mold, <laughs> chemical-wise, beyond the wet smell of the cave you're in, and you can definitely tell at this point where you are. It's hard to tell. There is a hint of sulfur but it doesn't seem to be coming from the pool. It mm. seems to more be the ambient air that is with you at this stage. You said just a few feet down? Mm-hmm. And, I mean, like, if I laid on my stomach and just, like, if you laid I your, touch my... If you laid your stomach down yeah. as you put your arm in, it would, it would only take about this far. You could probably get your entire upper arm into the pool, just lying down. I just want to touch it, make sure it's not sulfuric or anything like that. I mean, just... Yeah, I mean, you put your hand like, in. I'm like, oh, it is. I can't believe I'm doing this. It's about 50 degrees. Ooh. It's super cold. Oh. But you pull it up with no ill effect. There's no burning beyond the tingling of your flesh from just going straight into cold water. That water is very cold, and we will not be able to warm you up after. See? Ah! Yeah, if you can't grab it on the first go, you gotta come back up. It's worth a shot. Okay. I would not. We could all cuddle to warm you back up. Is that weird? I mean, no. you don't have any blankets. Give me the rope. Dead tired. You know, I'll I'll be the anchor at the end. Oh, you, you'll help me. <laughs> give you Billy, that. I see a die <laughs> roll in your I'll future. Will you, will you spot her and make I know. sure that something keep her in sight? You see anything swimming? Absolutely. Maybe yell. Sure. Good luck. I'll keep a lookout. We're gonna hold on to you, miss. It, honestly, I'm not a miss, I'm not a ma'am. It is the 21st century. Sir? I would not that be either. I, it's fine. Uh, Two ones for me. But you gonna re-roll? This is for you. I succeed, Reroll, right? re-roll, you re-roll on one. Re-roll on one. You do have an option for re-roll for those Get it back. You wish. Keep it, we need it. Three, two, I re-roll. Okay. What is it? My aggression. Would you mind telling me how aggression plays into this circumstance for those two ones? Uh, I'm my eagerness to prove myself. Uh, this should be like a, a bad thing that happens. No, I'm just wanting to know how you apply aggressive your vice into this circumstance. Whether it's just one of those. Screw it, I'm going in. Like, this is part of your character. This is the, in many ways, burning this is one of the most beautiful poetic things I've seen in the rule book is, is that this is, this is a part of you that dies now because you're using it to burn for this. So what part of you that is aggressive dies in this moment? Uh, I want to say I'm, I am so fired up by what, we've just seen by the zombie guy coming back to life, whatever was going on there, that I throw myself through the hole. And uh, the good news is that like, I'm actually able to push some of the extra rocks out of the way and widen that gap as I go through. Right. But somehow the shock of the cold water as I splash down into it, right. feels like it just knocked something out of me. Yeah, it was so shocking just the pins and needles that happen when you hit cold water like that it's almost like a part of you it just sucked the passion out of you and now we roll those ones let's see if you can keep them now yeah. mm -hmm. great nicely done so billy Three. you definitely dive down and blissfully yeah you can definitely take 
They could blissfully you uh it's not so deep that you can't grab the light. I would like to tell you one thing that I think you would see while down there, otherwise it is all yours. As you dive into this pool and start swimming in, like you said, you can feel kind of these small rocks that you've unlodged around you kind of drip down into you. And as you're swimming for this light, you actually see another source of light that is shining into the water from off to your to your right. And as you keep swimming down, you realize that it is direct light. It is direct light. Like there is a bioluminescence that you were talking about, but something is shining a light directly into this pool. As you grab it and can't make your way back up to the surface. I got it. All right. Oh my gosh, uh, you're amazing, Billy. Oh, thanks. This get her back light up and get means her warm. so much. Um, there's something down there. Something down there's there. There's a light. What do you mean? Another, a what? There's a light down there. A light. Yeah, Wait. you got it back. No, like a, a real one. A real light? What are you talking are you about? Sure there's no like electricity. The glowing. I saw what I saw. No generator has gas after three weeks, even if there was something down there. I mean, this soldier, look how clean he is. He ain't traveled far. Yeah, and he had to come from somewhere, and so did the bats. Okay, where'd you see it? Off to the right down there. Are you cold? Here, I hug. I wrap my arms around Billy. Thanks. Yeah, she's, um, I mean, her skin's cold, but uh, to be fair, the air is not, it, it is warm down here, you being underground. There's got to be another way in then. Do we swim for it or walk for it? Maybe less zombies through the water. You sure? No. Well. You think that the caves gonna, lead there? Maybe. We don't know that. We're not going to last more than a few minutes in that water. It's really cold. All right. Let's keep walking, and this is... Let's get a move on. The, the swan dive is the last resort. But the okay. water looks so nice. How far away was the edge of the water, if I could tell? When I was down Based there. on when you were down there, I mean, in pitch blackness, a light is a light, and mm. it carries quite far. So who knows? Huh? So it's yeah. hard to tell whether it was 50 feet or 500 feet. You just know that it was off to the right. Damn. So we'd have to swim with only a foot of room yeah. to grab a breath. Yeah, it's not Probably not safe. It might not. Not last. unless we have to. Yeah, not unless we have to. It's I guess the case. You're going to be okay. How do you feel? Fine. Jump up and down. We can do jumping jacks. <laughs> sure. So you uh, grab the light and Eliza um, doing jumping jacks anyway. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Half hearted. Yeah. Come on, do it with her. Don't make her feel dumb. <laughs> Let's just keep moving briskly yeah. and maybe that'll We can help. get our steady state cardio that way, ma'am. Uh, you hold the lamp and it's. It's disjointed at this point. The cavern that you're falling into, it may have been a more open, almost like a magma tube at some point, but really now you're seeing parts in which clearly like parts of the cave system have fallen in on each other. And there are several times in which you actually get to a, um, like a small cave-in and you're having to move blocks out of the way at this point. I mean, Billy, it's, it's cold and it's muggy in here. Um, but it, I mean, you're soaking wet and you're freezing and you are shivering at this point to the point of where your body is doing everything it can to try to fight off the cold. Um, I mean, if, if you don't mind, I could. If you could, what? Do you have magic hand yeah, powers? Do a hug, rub on you a little oh, bit. Oh, yeah, you thanks. Know? Yeah, that's all. I'm sorry. Ooh, me too. <laughs> I see a group hug happening. <laughs> all, right, so, all right, fine. Come on in here. Who knows how much time we got? And at that point is when you're in this group hug is when the light starts to flicker. And it starts to falter. It sticks on. But it starts to look like that maybe some water got inside of it finally. Mm. Let's keep going. Yeah. Do I have well, extra batteries in my backpack? While we're we got the blue glow stick. Uh, hold on to it. We don't need to see nothing right now. Smurf colored things. Right. Yeah, maybe but we save the light. Turn it off. Yeah, maybe turn and it dry off. Dry it out. I, I open it up and put the pieces in my backpack yeah. so that it can dry in separate pieces, maybe. So you continue to move through the darkness. 
this point, and you continue to walk through, and it seems a while as you keep coming down, and it's getting warmer, and it's getting warmer, and at some point, you just feel the end. You just walk straight into rock in front of you. <gasps> Does Isn't it that how caves are supposed to work? Rock a metal. Does it look there's got to be a way, even if it's too small to crawl through, there's got to be. Uh, hold up the... Caves always have... The water has to go somewhere. So you're going to have to probably crack a new one at this point because that one's probably run out at this point. Has it been hours? Is it one of those they last for they hours? It lasts about six hours. Okay, great. I mean, they're, they get dimmer and dimmer. Yeah. I rescind that. And we'll take a, your blue glow stick, but it has dimmed enough that you have to hold it right, right up, up to the rock. To the surface, is it really rock? And it is rock. It looks like a more major cave in oh, has hit this blocked. point. And as you kind of continue to move across, you can see that there might be a way to crawl through, but it would be one of those you'd have to press your body up against the far end of the rock wall oh, and squeeze then around. squeeze around through. Oh, I am not built for spelunking. No. What? I'm I'm big. I'm like barely five foot. <laughs> I'm really cheap. Maybe I'd try and squeeze through to do a little Just uh, reconnaissance. One quick question before you go through there. You never told us where you were from. Oh, well, uh, I was living in Albuquerque, but originally Minnesota. Hmm. Oh, take the glow stick. There's not much left, but... Oh, thanks. Um, will you hold my backpack? Yeah. Boone, you seem really interested in where people are living at this point. You've had three weeks with these points, or maybe not. Maybe it's only been a few days. I know this old boy, but... You know him, but these two ladies are... Maybe fresh in your group at this point. What's yeah. going through your mind right now? What is, what is, uh, why such the interest now in the people that you are with? I don't think they're gonna make it out of here, and I'd like to be able to tell their mamas or whoever comes looking who they were. Aww, right. That's really sweet. <laughs> Ethan's wearing my backpack in the shape of a unicorn. Great. It's a unicorn backpack. Yeah. <laughs> it looks good on looks you. looks great on me. <laughs> got a single horn. I got a horn. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe she'll let this you keep it. <laughs> All right. Try it, Lisa. Let's see if you can. Okay. I'm shimming sideways uh, down this okay. narrow part of the cavern, and I'm going to see what's beyond it and report back. Slow is smooth and smooth is fast. Don't go out of your shot. Okay. One six, no one ones. Six, no no one ones six, at all. No ones. Beckett's like, what do you mean you can't win a tank? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ties go to the GM. So <laughs> you, you succeed. You succeed. Let me make that clear. <laughs> but I will take narrative rights in this. Got it. That's what it means. What do you see? Can we get through? Uh, the stick doesn't have much light left. So you basically shimmy through as much as you can. And if you were any taller or any wider in the hips, you would not be able to make this through. But because you're going in through the side, you basically are lifting your body up to a spire, and you can actually feel the stone pressing upon your chest. This doesn't as, feel good. As you kind of hold into it, and there's this moment which you're trying so hard to control your breathing because you know that if you take a deep breath in, the rock's just going to puncture straight into your flesh and grind your skin against the stone. So you breathe with shallow, controlled movements as you pull yourself out from the stone, only hearing a small amount of cloth ripping as you pull yourself out to the other end and you find yourself in the other cave system. And holy hell if you don't see a door. A door? A steel door. I run over and pound on it. All right. You hear metal pounding. What the hell There's is that? There's a door. What's that? There's a steel door. What? Door? So, there is some, someone's built something under here. Soldier. You got to get through that. We've got to move rocks or something. I actually, how far back was the soldier's body? I mean, uh, about an hour's walk. Oh. Mm. Okay. Can we shift any of these rocks without it coming down on us? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Can you? I'm going to take off the backpack and <laughs> hand it to Billy. Looks better on you anyway. 
Yeah, I don't know, man. It's, yeah. Live a little. I'll start it wherever I think I can shift some rocks most easily without it coming down. Maybe at the top. Great. Mm. One, no one. sixes, one, one. Re -roll. No sixes. I will re-roll. What are you? Selfish. Selfish. You're burning selfish on this. Mm -hmm. Tell me, how does selfish apply in this situation? My first impulse is to just hurl myself through the little hole I've made and leave the rest of them behind. Mm. But I don't, right? I stick it out and I let the rock fall on me. Great. I'll take it. Then roll that one and let's see how bad that rock is. Two. Okay. So, Ethan, you begin getting up to the top and you start pulling those rocks <sighs> down and you dislodge a larger one. And you kind of feel as you pull it off, it comes out a lot easier than you supposed it would be. And you fall back with the rock. Oh as you tumble down onto this, this small, like, concave, and more importantly, you see a smaller one <coughs> tumble down, and you are pelted. You are ingrained, and you hear something snap underneath you uh. as you lay on the pile of brush. Ah, oh, it hurts. Whoa, 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 whoa. Can, can I ask an, an out-of-game thing? The things that we said we saw, you know, the... The brinks. Oh, the brinks. Oh, no, no, sorry. The things we say we saw. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say the wrong parlance. Are those things that it's only up for them to bring into the game, or can we bring into the fact that I saw you do black? You know them. You know that as okay. a truth, if you feel it's important to bring a brink up, that is what it's for. Got it. But at this stage, I will tell you that there are seven candles and seven truths that do need to be spoken. Ethan, since you unfortunately failed the conflict role, we do get to begin with you first. I hear the world is dark. That's what I hear. That is the I truth. I hear these things. This is true. It's true. The world is dark. What else is true? The stone I pulled out and it's now crushing some part of me has writing on it. Copy that. Billy. You found a key card on that guard when you were taking his fatigues earlier? It's a truth. Boom. The writing on the key card and on the stone are the same, and they are not English. Right? The break was a minor bone fracture in your foot. The, there's a, a key slot that is a key card next to the sealed door. There's a key card reader next to the door. That's the word. Yeah, key card reader. There's a key card reader next to the steel door. Okay. Six. I know how to splint a bone. You know how to splint a bone. And Billy, you get the last one. What did you already establish about the other rocks falling down? He said that there was writing on the yeah, stone. And yeah. I said it's not English. Yeah. But um, it matches the key card. But it matches the I'm key curious, card. like, I, did it come away from the impenetrable wall? Is the wall worse or better? The, the cave-in? Yeah. The cave-in, well... This is your truth. Why don't you tell me? Shit, I should have said there was more buttons. <laughs> My plan was to make it better, but... <laughs> better was never an option. <laughs> yeah, it's worse. The structural integrity is worse. Great. Seven candles, seven truths. We pick up right where we left off. Ethan, you're laying in a oh. bed of rock right now. I'm trying oh. to get it off of him. Right. What happened on that side? Oh, cave in. Hey, um, can I see her at all? I know she slid through, but I'm like, if we look down. So in one of those situations, oh, pulling the top mm -hmm. off, there might be a situation where if you, after you clear it off, if you climb up the cave in, you might be able to see her 
over the other side. Do they have any light? Do I have any reasonable expectation of being able to get this key to her, to throw it to her or anything? I mean, hand it to her. Like, I I don't, I mean, I got long arms. I don't, without it being, like, clearly a terrible idea (laughs) to try and hand the key over. No. um, Is this a conflict is what I'm trying to ask myself right now. Is this a reasonable conflict that's worth rolling? Is there a chance that, as always, a chance that danger could come? <laughs> so, You're welcome for get making the... the structural integrity worse. Thank yes. you. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Uh, Pass the key card. I'm like, hey, uh, see if this opens the door. Maybe you can get us some help over there. And I reach Where'd through. you get that? Ow, off that old boy back there. He wasn't using it. Well, I mean, it's no sixes, but no ones. I don't know. Is that re-roll, is re-roll, good? Re-roll, 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 re-roll. I, I don't know no what happens. ones to re-roll. No ones to oh. re-roll. Just nothing there. <laughs> oh, that's how that works. Oh. The structural integrity has failed. Oh. And as you reach forward, you actually disjoint one of the small rocks that was holding up one of the larger rocks, and you feel as it doesn't crumble down upon you, but you are now pinned with your arm directly onto the rocks. Yeah, damn it. Okay. Did she at least get Can the key? Can I see his hand? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Boone, thank you. I have to jump up really high. Grab it. Uh, all right. Can you get out of there? I do not know. Well, there's time because there's now six candles and six truths that need to be exposed in this. So, uh, Boone, the world is dark. Your hand has been caught in this tumbling of rocks as you put your hand through. Just one, all it took was one of them just to slightly move before it went and then pinned your upper shoulder. We're not talking arm. We're like in there at this moment and your shoulder is being crushed now and it's not pressing to the point of where it's breaking bones but it is stuck and you have one arm available to you right now what is your truth i am claustrophobic (laughs) 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 Uh, yay um The sulfur is making its way down the cavern. I was just going to say that. I'm glad we're on the same page. Uh, the floor beneath my side in front of the door. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I, I test my foot on an area I haven't stepped on yet, mm-hmm. and a little corner of it starts to crumble away. So your side is unstable? Mm, the floor, yeah, the ground beneath me. Okay. One, two, three, four. Somewhere on the other side of the door is the sound of a very loud splash. Splash. On the other side of the door? Mm Mm-hmm. Got it. The metal door. The metal door. Copy that. There's another door? No, your metal door. Your door that you haven't opened yet. Mm. Five. Your hand may be stuck, but it's not your good hand. It seemed easier for reaching, but you've still got your good hand free. Your long hand, not your good hand. <laughs> sure. And you do get the last truth, boom. She will absolutely open that door. <laughs> 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 All right. We pick this back up. Amelia, where it is Boone, you can feel the weight of it on your arm. Oh, and there's that yeah. part where your body is starting to twist and move because you cannot move your arm. And in your mind, something is pressing down upon you. You are terrified. I don't know, man. Mm. Nick, give like him the acid in the unicorn backpack. Uh, That's I mean, a great idea. Just you gotta get, 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 get me out of here. I can't stay in here like this. Open that door, get help, move these rocks. I do not care. Just put it get, on his tongue. Just get me out of here. Boone needs to calm down. You want to be mentally somewhere else? Uh, what? Yes. Okay. 
Oh, man. All right. Uh, All right. She lifts you and grabs you a small piece of rice paper. Are you throwing it in? I will say I do not know what this is or what its providence is. So it must be a painkiller that I know she has. Okay, so you yes. just put it in. I take the painkiller. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. And you drop it yeah. <laughs> and put it in. Um, I'll try and get help. Maybe there's help. All right. So Can I move now? Yeah. Do you think? Yeah. No. I think at this point you've you've adjusted. I mean, All it right. hurts to put weight on yeah, your foot. Yeah. Well, we're not running any marathons. Right. Can I'm I like, make my way over to the rock pile? And what did you do? I tried to get the key across. As far as I could tell, I succeeded at a cost. All right. All right. Do you want to dislodge him? Well, we got it. We can't leave him here. We've got to try to move him. All right, Billy, you help me. Yeah. And let's gently. Gently try to move these rocks off him one at a time. Now I'm kind of balanced up here to keep weight off my foot, so hopefully this doesn't go. Just like focus on happy thoughts, man. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! What are you scared of right now? What is about the claustrophobia that is getting you? What is this bearing thought that's coming upon you that is making your brain, which has, by the way, prepared for all of this for your entire life? Yes. Why is this triggering you right now? I've made it so close to the end. I cannot die here. I cannot die like this. I cannot die just in a pile of rocks, feet from the door. All right, go ahead. Two ones, one six. Do you want an option to burn? You did succeed. You bet. Well, let's see. You do get it, the do one, it. Though, right? I get the no. ones. We'll take this. Inventive. Inventive. <laughs> Why don't you mm -hmm. tell me how inventive you are in this process? That unicorn backpack has straps. We're going to use those, and we're going to loop them around the big rock and okay. get some leverage uh -huh. and slide it off him gently and easily. Industrial unicorn backpack. <sighs> Saved by the you, unicorn. You feel the weight come I'm off. I'm so glad you. you brought that. <laughs> what are you doing to Corny? So. Corny's saving the day. It's good. Yes, Corny is. And even Knew just it. the weight of it coming off <sighs> is like an endorphin rush, which <sighs> makes the stuff kick in <laughs> quicker at this point. And at this stage, you're starting to feel good. Like, you are feeling very, very, uh, well, you're in a much better mood about things, you know. As much as I thought. Thank, thank, thank you. Yeah. Boone, go. I think I'm going to like you a lot better when I see you next. I hope I see him again. And at this point, I'll even go so far as to say that the hole that you moved out created at this point is enough where you could all kind of crawl through. I will go. Uh, I careful will go of the ground. It's yeah. it's sort of that corner is not very stable. When I'm un dislodged, I go forward rather than back. All right. So you go forward into that. Mm -hmm. so you thank you all. Thank you. And you roll a little done, bit no, off of the one. cave in. Oh, sorry. Not that one. You kind of roll off of the cave in a little bit and, and settle in close to where Eliza is at the base of it, and she points out. You're a weirdo, but you're okay. <laughs> I take that as a compliment. Hey, uh, I kind of loop my good arm under Ethan's ribs. I'm like, <laughs> hey. I got two feet, you got two hands. Hey, thanks. <laughs> you okay? You okay? <laughs> no. Oh. oh my gosh, yeah, you're be, like a. I don't know. I have something busted, but we keep going. We'll... Yeah. 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 It's, it's not. I don't. I don't know what was. What was in that medicine you gave me? I cannot feel That's... a thing. I. You're welcome. Just... Can I? What's it? What's that writing? It's everywhere. Can't y'all see it? That's the same as on the rock we pulled out. What is it is a it? language? That... So, being like that it is human. not English. Can I make a suggestion? I'm interested in your suggestion. It is hieroglyphic. Okay. <laughs> Into it. Uh, <laughs> as the rock kind of dislodges, you do see that there is um, writing on the wall that's laid out right before. It is... I mean, uh, you're a learned man, right? Yeah. Ethan, uh, it is, like, it's difficult to tell, but it's pre-Egyptian hieroglyphics. It, something from antiquity? It's an antiquity language, for sure. Wow. Could be, oh, who knows? What's before Egyptian? Babylonian? Sumerian? 
older. I feel like this is you guys. It is <laughs> biblical. <laughs> yeah, for all we know. Are you all right? You've been yeah. over here a while. I mean, are you guys um, Do you know feeling this? a little short of breath? I think that smell is getting stronger. It definitely is starting to smell like rotten eggs a little bit. Uh, we should we should try the door, right? Yeah. <laughs> we came all this way. You might as well try it. Is there just one opening? One reader. Okay. One door. I scan the key. Pictures of it. It goes green. The colors Boop. even. Colors seem so. The weird. door's opening. Oh. You hear a loud, <laughs> but the door doesn't open. What? I jam the the handle as hard as I can. You move the handle. Mm-hmm. All right, you feel as soon as you hold into it, as soon as you put weight into it, it just dumps right open. It just literally falls right open. That can't you be kind good. of open up. It stays on its hinge, but the, the metal door is, is heavy, so you don't fall face first into it, but you find yourself on a small metal catwalk. <gasps> with grating right below you. What the heck is this? This is, this is help. There let's could be help in there. This could be military. Let's get inside and close the door behind us. Good call, yeah. So you all pile through the door, and you yeah. find yourself on the metal catwalk as the door slides behind you, and you hear the metallic <laughs> of something locking behind you. I run ahead about 10 feet, so we're spaced out weight-wise on weight this wise. part of the catwalk. So you kind of move forward. As you kind of start going through, you realize that there's the natural cave system that is to the left of you, but that cave system slowly kind of breaks away into a large open pool area, Ooh. unlike the water of which oh. you are close to. That is beautiful. Yeah. And it is sparkling, Boone. That you think the so. lights are dancing, and <laughs> you can actually see these floodlights are shooting into the water, and in the water, oh. you see something. It is... Now, how long have you been underground? Like, did you... Were you any of you around when the monoliths rose through the ground? No, I've been here a couple of days. I, I think we found it. I would say the first monolith destroyed my stockpile, so right. I witnessed it and fled. So, in the middle of the pool, going through the water and up into the ceiling is one of the monoliths. The You're heck, seeing the heck is that thing? one of the bases of the monolith that's emerged in this crystalline pool of water, and the floodlights are just... Poof, hitting onto it right now. How wide is it? Is At this point, it is very wide. Like we're talking, you're in a large cave system and this pool is large, but really you're only seeing a portion of it. A large amount of it is just still hidden in the rock. And you are impressed by just how clean this thing has cut through. And it's the fact that there's no rubble laid out around it. It is almost as if someone took a hot needle and pushed it right through and found its way up into the surface. Like, it is insane how cleanly it has pierced the Earth's crust. Anybody here? Shh! What if there's one of those things Anybody in here? Water? Anybody here? Anybody here? Hey, somebody replied. <laughs> That's just, my brain's starting to process sound differently. It's gonna be wonky for a while. No, I heard you do sound just like it, but it was out there somewhere. You're right, Boone. What kind of medicine did you give him? What kind of medicine works? Look, maybe take it for your foot, man. I don't feel anything. How's your foot? <laughs> what happened? Uh, I don't know. I fell backwards when I yanked the rock out, and I think I broke something. But I got it wrapped a little bit. I can't put a lot of weight on it, but I'd rather not mess up my head. And you do have a. A little the catwalk does have a little I've bit of got a railing, railing so I can pull myself mm -hmm. along. Mm -hmm. Look at this yeah. thing. I mean, ancient hieroglyphics, none of this is random. No, this was all intended. Do you think the monolith messed up whatever underground building was here? This well, bunker, the Maybe. lights are pointing at the monolith, so I think that might be why it all feels pretty intentional. That's uh, why this is here. Do you want Wait, an aspirin? A weeks. I don't have many left, but that looks yeah, like it hurts. Got, is it, yeah, you it's aspirin. Uh, <laughs> what? Is that just aspirin? Yeah. Oh, a tablet. Aspirin. Sure. I'll 
So yeah, aspirin. I'll pop it. Can't hurt. No. Uh, it does, though, as you kind of continue to move forward oh. a little bit. Mm. Um, you get, again, like I said, past this natural causeway, and you do off to the left where the big natural cave uh-huh. system is and the monolith, which has, again, cut through the pool up into the ceiling of the cave system and continues to seem to go up. And the pools of light are flooding into it. And you can see that wherever this thing was laid out, the 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 floodlights that are shining into the water, the monolith is very close to it. It's one of the reasons why the pool of light wasn't so bright is because it was still hitting the monolith straight on. And you can see a couple of small, they seem like, you know, small containers, almost like, containers. like tiny, tiny, well, hab units, you know, like some kind of underground structures that are laid out along the, the underground lake front. Mm. This is what you saw. This is the light. Oh, do you think they have food? I hope they they get food. Is there a way to get down there? Is there a ladder or stairs or anything? If you continue to walk along the causeway, um, you do eventually see that there is a descending spiral staircase that will take you down. The thought of food takes me very quickly down those stairs. Oh, but then I turn back to see if you need... I can make it. I can hop. Okay. I'll go last in case I'm too heavy for any of this stuff. Does your arm hurt? Do you need one of these... Thank you, Eliza. Oh, no, whatever you gave me before is doing great. <laughs> okay. yeah. So, Boone, as you kind of sit back and wait, you are, you know, waiting for everyone to go down, and you take a moment to look at this giant thing that is, frankly, the cause of everyone's problems. Mm. You know, it is a symbol of everything that has happened in these last couple of weeks. Can I run up to it and kick it? Yeah, I mean, you, once you eventually get down there, if you finally get down, you do, or you are on the lakefront, Jeez. and you do see the, uh, you could probably walk right up to it, and it is crisp and black, and it is just cut stone, and it's smooth and polished. I mean, it's risen through the ground. You would expect it to be cracked and scraped from all of the surrounding rock, but it is pristine. I'm so like, mad at it. I slap it as hard as I ha- can, but I don't want to break my knuckles. Hard. Yeah, <laughs> slap it as hard as you can, and for a brief moment, you felt like you saw something, like a flash of light, almost like there was a doorway right there. I put my hands on don't it. Don't hurt yourself. What are you doing? Well, there's something here. Come put your hands on it. I put my I, hands on it. The song we heard? Yeah. I start singing the song we heard. Yeah. Well, it was more of a sound, for sure. I attempt to duplicate it. Yeah. As you sing into it, you lay out these harmonious imitations of the sounds that you've heard, and you place your hands upon it, and you feel nothing. It's cold. Mm. It's inert. It just is there. That moment before. Where's the flash? I felt something. It was before the flash you hit. It was before you saw it, but it was kind of as you were bringing your hands down, you saw the light, and then as soon as you hit it, it just blacked out. So. Wait, I saw something. Something happened. I I don't. Boone, hush, hush. At this stage, with you singing, Boone, you quiet your voice, but because you've quieted your voice, you can start to hear the chitting. I lean my back up against the monolith. You look up in the floodlights that are barely a part of this. You can see that outside of the perimeter of the floodlights, the ceiling is moving. <gasps> what the? Oh my God. So many moving chitinous oh, bodies no. that are laid up on the top of the ceiling. Okay, fast, let's go, let's go. Arms around each other. I, I, I do start moving him and I point at the monolith Y'all, y'all know what that is? No idea. <laughs> yeah, it's it's what teeth. started all this. The Earth's teeth. The Earth's teeth. Come to you said there were hab units? Doesn't matter. They yeah, looked like containers, like like someone like put ha- a container ship. You could live in them, like they're temporary dwellings? Let's get down there. Let's mm-hmm. check for food quickly before we get out of here. Well, okay. Before we become food. When the Earth doesn't have teeth. I know it feels mm-hmm. like it does right now, but... Uh, what do you call it, then? Teeth can break. 
stabilizer, take the dice, and let's see if the key card works for these units. Oh, okay. Because it has a magnetic lock just like the other ones do. I try the key card on the nearest tab. I was thinking the wrong numbers. Mm. Let's let's burn this. What's this? Manipulative. You have two ones in the reroll. How do you want to manipulate or be manipulative in this scenario? This is the end of Lisa being manipulative in the rest of the world. She's using it for a purpose, and what is that purpose right now? Uh, I... I'm, I'm trying to do something myself instead of making someone else do it. And I know that they could fall on me. I'm bringing attention. I'm making noise. But I, I give up my need to twist other people into taking action and just... Do it yourself. Do it myself. You lean into it. Six. One six. No one. Six. No one. In fact, told I you would, I could win this game. I would actually say at this point that the, while I'm, I, I apologize for my wording of saying that this is the death of manipulation, but this is truly, I mean, you're leaning into a vice in order to make this happen. So you want this food very badly, and you're bringing this key card together. You've already got two wounded people with you. There's something going on in your mind. Something has been driving you since the beginning of this since you even started with this moment with your friends at this festival. What's going on in your mind right now as you're hoping to get into this heavy unit? What are you hoping to find? An answer. Answer. I want to find a home. I want to find some place where whoever I'm with, we can just lock ourselves away and just live out our days. I just want to find the music in life again. And there is literally a place with power and there's nothing more hopeful than seeing some power for the very long time so the key card goes green Boop. Yes. and you hear the magnetic lock oh. hallelujah let's go and you walk all inside yeah. shut the door behind us yeah and look up towards the ceiling so you look up and you can continue to see that there are these i mean when i say the ceiling is moving I mean, there are hundreds of them. It's the same ceiling? It's the, it's the same ceiling. It's the ceiling outside, mm. yes. Um, where the, on the, the, the cave ceiling. Oh, uh, we looked up before we went in the oh, you're, unit, you mean? Yes. Uh, I'm sorry, were you talking about the ceiling? I wanted to make sure unit. the heavy unit was not crawling. Ah. Uh -huh. uh -huh. <laughs> no, it is, uh, it is only about a foot taller than you all walking, maybe even just inches for you, or you have to hunch over, and you see harsh direct fluorescent light wow. and what is otherwise a fairly sterile if not um it just smells of aluminum and disinfectant mm. and it just smells like a lab i start going through stuff that's the best smell i've ever smelled i look what are they for doing down here yeah, any sort of searching. communication equipment ham radio anything right let's give it a thorough search let's do Looking for supplies. You want the ham radio and you want the goo. So why don't you roll for the goo? For the what? For the stuff. Mm -hmm. Sorry. The goo? Yeah, we've had plenty of goo. We're good on goo. Yeah. <laughs> it's my colloquial. <laughs> Whatever. Let's see what you find. We all were good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what there is to find. Let's see if there's some loot. All right. There's got to be something in here. <gasps> hey, see two sixes but a one. Two ones. Two ones. Two ones for me. You got anything yeah. to burn? Yeah, yeah. 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 And there is an option in a reroll. That's two dice. Yep. All right. Got to be the top one. Oh, it has oh, to be okay. the top one. Uh, Is that your moment. Yeah. How does it work? It doesn't work. Hmm? You oh, have no. to fulfill your moment before you can burn the next. I can't reroll unless I can do this. Right. You have to take whatever is on the top first. I'm so sorry. Nope. What Should have remembered that. Hey, what, what do they have needles? Do they have needles? 
well, you have an opportunity to do the narration at this point. So <laughs> the dice will still be mine. I just need to see if I can take narrative control, which I cannot. What happens when we run out of dice? You cannot. They'll either be sixes or ones. That's it. No, what I mean is every time we get a one, you take dice. What happens if we have no more dice? It, it's mm. actually impossible because even if you're down to one dice, because I've taken everything else, that will either be a six or it will be something other than a six. If it's anything other than a six, scene ends. Got it. So if you're down to one dice, it is literally all or nothing. Got it. No pressure. Yeah. Okay. You uh, said it was a lab, right? It is a lab. What kind of lab? It's a research lab. It's a geology lab. Geology. Seems like it has maybe a hint of architectural study or archaeological study in it as well, too. It's a lot of samples that have been uh, laid out and put into various containers. So there's a working computer, even. Shit. Uh, working computer? Yeah. Are you saying this thing is on? It has juice? Yeah. I'm saying it has juice in it. I haven't seen lights in so long. Well, heck, let's just stay here. What's the computer doing? Is it, when I hit the enter key, what happens? It kind of watches it, slowly boots out of sleep, and a log and credential comes right up. What do we find? Yeah, we... What uh, else do you find supply-wise? We find, uh... We find, like, a lot of miscellaneous containers. Uh, we do find a small cache of, like, snacks. Snacks. Mm -hmm. Needles. And water. Some what? water. Needles. Uh, and we do. We find some samples of various minerals uh, and some, some needles from... Some surgical tools, for mm -hmm. geology tools for cleaning mm -hmm. materials and things like that. It's at that point you hear a, What are you doing here? <laughs> What the fuck? What do you mean, what Turn the fuck? Turn around and you see a man who just seems to just be in a disheveled coat with a white shirt that has just been soiled and long kind of slacks. And he just is wrecked. You see he has kind of a, a, a grizzled kind of beard into him. He's stumbling in the door and he goes, who the hell are you? How did you get down here? By the grace of God, friend, be Who are easy. You? Well, the caves. What are you doing here? <sighs> this is my goddamn lab. It's what it is, or was. Hey, what are you doing? Did you end the world? Did you? He turns around, doesn't answer your question, and you watch as he turns around. He just grabs a bottle and sits down. And how much of that do you have? Yeah, can we have some? <laughs> he watches. He takes an earbud, looks at you. He goes, take what you want. And oh. puts an earbud in. And you watch as he takes a remote. Boop. And you watch as a door <laughs> slides in front of you. I go pound on the door. Open up. What is wrong with you? We haven't seen people in so long. Good. Let's keep it that way. Stop it. How do you have power? Tell us what this place is. What did you do? Oh, God, so many questions. You don't care. It doesn't matter. Hey, interview him. You know what to do here. Because I, I draw the knife, and I'm like, you know what I think. Yeah, I know what you think. Put that away, Bryn. I mean, don't hurry. Talk to us. Ooh. No. <laughs> Please. We got nothing else to do. Yeah, we'll, we'll tell you what we saw. Aren't you lonely? What we found. Don't you want to know? Watch as the door shh, <laughs> opens. I'd like to hear what you have to say. We're not here to judge you. It's too late for that. What's the point? Yeah, I know. I got the same feeling, but... What's we don't the point in keeping your secrets? If we don't share the story, no one will ever know. And it was all for nothing. He kind of sits up. You can clear that he looks hung over as hell. 
you know? And he kind of walks over to a cabinet and grabs glasses and kind of takes it and sits on the bed and puts the four glasses on the floor. What was his ear? Yeah, what was his he earbuds earbuds connected to? He's still got one earbud in. It seems to be some media player that he's got tucked in his lab coat. Do you have music? I haven't heard music in so long. Can I just can it's I just hear for weeks. a second? God, you all look like hell. <laughs> you all look like fresh hell. Well, I wouldn't go pointing any fingers if I were you. I'm so sorry. Look, just just take it easy, take it slow, and pour us a drink. And he kind of takes the media player out and kind of puts it. Just just don't break it. It's probably the last one on Earth. You only have classical music in here. That's all I listen to. <laughs> Can I? I take the earbud out of his Ooh, ear. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Mine. I had a vinyl collection that would have melted your face in my holdout spot. He pours a bunch of liquor laid out and kind of like goes and sits down on the glass and goes... you know what that is? What's he pointing at? How the hell would we know what that is? Maybe a little coma. What's he pointing at? He's pointing outside to presumably where the monolith is. Oh, the big black thing? No, but they're all over the earth, I think. Yeah, that makes sense. We didn't get a lot of news before it all went black, dark, but none of us do. No one has any idea. You we, don't know what it is? No clue. No fucking clue. We've been studying it for years. You must have some information. We know that it's made of a material that we don't know. We've tried to chip it. We've tried to pull it apart, take samples from it. I don't know if you've noticed, but it accepts every bit of light possible. Nothing can go in it. It doesn't reflect any light back at all. I, we can't break it off no matter how hard we try. And one day, it just came all the way up. Do you know how deep we are right now? Not really. Deep. Deep enough, but it doesn't show up on any seismic charts. It didn't show up on anything. We've been monitoring these things for as long as we've been mining in the earth. They don't show up on radar. They don't show up on a spectrograph. No one knows what the fuck these things are. And he kind of like takes a table and just flips it up and goes, and now everyone is gone. Everyone is dead. Not quite everyone. Uh, what's your name, friend? I mean, pour it. Just fucking drink it, all right? Yeah, cheers. Who we cheer? Who we cheers into? What's your name? It's Mozart. Mozart. Just call me Mozart. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. It's a terrible DJ name. He kind of takes a little sip of it and then puts it down and goes, "Are those things still out there?" Oh yeah. Well, I hate to tell you, but there's no food in here. What? There's very little water left. What have you been living on? Just this stuff? Basically. On the last of the food. Well, I ate it yesterday in one last grand feast. <laughs> Anybody else here but you? No. I'm the only one stupid enough to have stayed cowardly enough to watch all my associates and friends go out and be taken by those things, all in a desperate attempt to get out. Hey, no. That was the smart thing to do. You had to do what you could to survive. No, no. No, it's better to just go at this stage. There's nothing left. You don't understand the world is done for. It is. Everywhere? Everywhere. How do you I know? Have you been outside? Well, yeah, but, I mean, what if we went to, I don't know. Australia? Yeah, or 
Shanghai or the North Pole or <laughs> the goddamn International Space Station. I don't know. I I don't know what's going on out there, but everything that we've read in here indicates that this is the end. This is it. Why the hell didn't you tell anyone? For the reasons that the government doesn't tell a lot of people about end of world prophecies and end of cycles and end of civilization because as soon as you tell everybody it all becomes chaos and anarchy nothing had happened we didn't know when these things were going to come up they just one day rose so more secrets more deception what do you know about the writing it looks very old yeah it looks biblical it's pre-biblical i don't know what the hell it is I mean, for all we know, it's not even of this world. It's just here. I mean, we literally have no idea why these are planted, but how could there be so many in the earth? Who could even plant something like this in here? It certainly wasn't us. I mean, it's gotta be extraterrestrial, right? There's or, gotta be so much more than us in the universe. <laughs> or Yay. simply divine. <laughs> Maybe. Look, I... You said they've been here before we even started digging, right? From back to who knows how long, right? Well, it was prophesied that this day would come upon all of us, and it is here. All right. Here's the deal. I'm going to lay it down. And from everything that I know about this place and the fact that you're all here, I wish you could. I would just wish you were here six hours ago. Just six hours ago, I maybe something could have come of it. What'd you what? what are you happened? talking about? What happened six hours ago? It doesn't matter. It what does oh, really it matters. It does the most important thing possible. Makes me more thrifty. He kind of looks towards the side of the bed, and that's where you can see several pill bottles are laid out completely empty at this point each top kind of popped off at this stage oh mozart what'd you do we gotta make him throw up i stick my finger down his throat all right conflict here no no i don't <laughs> <laughs> no never no he mozart kinda, you gotta stick your finger down your throat he kind of puts his hand <laughs> it was hours ago that's just gonna make yourself vomit it was hours. it's no point it's just no point i just why does it always have to be the fog at the edge of the limits so close if i had known anyone was still alive it would have been fine it could have gone we could try we could make an escape we could just go for it mozart you got any way to talk into the outside world and hear a radio that computer anything what's the computer password the radio died days ago it was some guy singing on a broadcast and that was it we this is a one channel out in order to make sure there's no leak of information it can only listen. It can't go out. It's the only reason I knew all this shit was happening up there. As far as the password goes, fine. You can go into it. It's just an intranet. It's at the local network. It doesn't go outside. What's the password? He writes down the password for you. Okay. How many more of these hab units are there? I don't know. They might have food. There's, I don't know. I only know about this one. They keep a closed network onto it. We all had... Code black access to this stuff. This is all the shit that you know that's covered up in government budgets. All I know is about this one. They make sure that if we get information out that no one else can figure out what else is out there. Is there anything down here that can help you? First aid kit, medicine, something? The cat. He kind of motions over, turn and goes, we used it up days ago. I, I lean in and I put my, my hand on him, my good hand, and I say, uh, I'm not going to try and disturb your rest, friend. You deserve to die with some dignity, but those of us who ain't done fighting, which way would you recommend we go? Yeah. No, that's a good point. I made my choice. Hold on. I got some stuff and they dump out my little bag. Just keep it. It's for you. I I know what to do. I know what to do now. Oh, okay. 
Here's what we know. They're afraid of the light. They feed off of sorrow and despair. The monolith calls to those select. I've heard stories of people finding the monolith and getting close to it and something happens. But it's fickle. Well, something happened to me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know what it was. You saw something. Why? Is she in danger? Flash. What did you She's think not in danger, but... Neither is she have anything else. I don't know. Sometimes, well, one of my associates, one day after it leapt up, just decided to go to it. And she walked right towards it. And she was there. And then she wasn't. And that's like she passed through a door. Maybe, maybe she went into it. Maybe she was taken by whoever put them there. I don't know. Maybe she was chosen or something. I mean, Boone's crazy, but who knows? None of us <laughs> saw it ever. I don't know where she went. I don't know how she got there. She was just there, and then she was gone. And none of us have seen it since then. So I don't know what your plan is, how you want to go, but if you want to get out, there is an express elevator that will take you to the surface. Yeah, the surface is a no-go. It's poisonous now. Sulfur. I'm not sure why. Volcano. Oh. Move real big. Oh. It's oh. real bad up there, yeah. That's awful. <laughs> I take another drink. <laughs> this thing coming up. And... At the end of the day, Mother Earth wins. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I'm so sorry. We should have told everybody. We should have said something. Well, but then what would we have gained by just the mass hey, man. There's panic? nothing that, uh, that wouldn't have helped. It's cool. Be sorry. Yeah. I'm here to tell you. They wouldn't have done shit. I spent my whole life trying to convince people to prepare, and nobody gave a good goddamn, buddy. Well, and what did it help? Uh, I'm, I'm still alive. I'm sorry. I I thought being here alone for so long that I would want to see people again. But now that you're here, I just want to be alone. And I'm so tired. Can we tuck you in? Sure. I mean, sure, yeah. I just... Does he have a cot? All of the notes, they're on the laptop. We kept everything we could. All the data is there for whatever it's worth. You can keep it. I don't care. Can like I it, have your music? <laughs> make your promise. When I'm not here anymore, you can take whatever you want, but just leave me the last little piece with it that I can have. I mean, I don't deserve it, but just... That's not what music's for. Here. He kind of puts both of the earbuds back in and kind of grows back on his cot, which is just, it's just she too dirty. It just looks like he's been spending most of his time on this thing anyway. And you can kind of see his eyes are starting to flutter as he kind of lays back. And he puts it onto his chest, leans back and goes, I'm so sorry. It's, I hope you find redemption, whatever that means. And just know that some things are better than death. Some fates are worse than death. But we are all going to die. So you choose how you want to live. And he just leans his head back and drifts off into a sleep of which he will never wake up from. I pull the sheet up over him and over his face. Yeah. Well, I think we should all be so fortunate. Boone, you know anything about needles? Yeah. Oh, all you need is some pen ink and just, I mean, even my safety pen would work. I've done it on myself. What are you talking about? You have about? so many amazing kindergarten skills. Yes, okay. 
Oh, yeah. You've never done a DIY tat? <laughs> no. I... I've never been to prison. Oh. Uh, I saw people doing them at the festival. They had a booth, actually. I just... You want a tattoo? Is it... Can I find a pen yeah, that I, I can look. break open? Yeah. I, I've I'm been not... in a lot of dumb places like this. Not secret facilities, but like stupid doctor's offices. And they won't take you if you've recently gotten a tattoo or a piercing. And uh, look, I'm tired of waiting. What, what am I waiting no, for? No judgment here. Get all the tattoos you want. But I think your plasma donation days are over, yes. Okay, I break open a bunch of pens and put them into, find some sort of little cup or something. Petri dish. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, you heat it All up. you need to do is dip a needle in the ink and then just stab, 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 stab. Little tiny ones. It barely bleeds. You begin. What do you want? Gross. What do you want, like a what unicorn design? or a heart or, I mean, I could only Gross. do like a unicorn horn. Mm, no thanks. Um, like a do geometric a shape. Uh, if we live, it'll be hilarious. <laughs> 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 All right, this will take a while, and it's gonna mm. it doesn't you're hurt that bad, another right? Drink take another in the drink. Meantime, yeah. While yeah. you're doing that, I'm gonna try to figure out the laptop. So, Ethan, yeah, at this point, you have the login, and Boone, sure. you're watching as Billy and Elisa are doing this DIY tattoo. Point and um, stick, baby. Yeah, go ahead. Peter. I'm actually looking at the monolith. He no, said it chooses people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you done this before? Yeah. Do you have any I don't go. Doing? But I'm looking at it. Yeah. Well, in your You're certified teacher. In your induced state, you stare at this thing and you can still see as the cloud of a cloud we well, it is kind of a cloud. It's more movement that's still laid up above. And you kind of sit just cross legged on the steps of this fab. They haven't come down into you. You are bathed in light, but there is darkness laid out in front of you. And the monolith is just absorbing every piece of light that is in there. And you kind of reflect upon this giant structure laid out before you. And you find yourself asking it a question. What question do you want to ask it? Are you the way? In this hazed state, you can actually see that when you look into this monolith, you're looking into the void of space, like it is accepting no light. And when you look into it, you swear to God, you can see the stars in there, these little pricks of light as you just gaze infinitely into this thing. I want to ask you something, Boone. Mm -hmm. Are you a good person? Yes. Why are you a good person? I really did try to shepherd as many people as I could safely through to the end. That was the point of the preparation. It wasn't for me to live. It was to bring along as many as I could safely. I like to think of myself as relatively selfless. Ethan, do you believe that? Do you believe that Boone is a good person? Yes, I think he probably is. I think that the dividing line between good and evil is hazy at best on a clear day, but I certainly believe that he thinks he's on the right side of it, and that's good enough for me. Ethan, as you tap into the password into this computer, you get up to a, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> shit, an operating system. Oof. Yeah. Uh. And it's laden with the messiest desktop you've ever seen in your it's life. Yes. <laughs> wow, you guys are slobs. And you poke around and you go through things, and you find files, you do see oh, there's a lot of data. And it's, it's years of this stuff. Years of this stuff. How long were they at this? And at a glance, you can tell everything that he meant. Spectrometer readings, light readings, material readings, all of these things are coming up, and it's all inconclusive. Plenty of truth here, but none of it useful. Mm, clearly. So he was being, he was honest about it. 
Yeah, it was. It was. That is a hope dice. Is your moment on top? That is for you. It succeeds on a five or a six. Things moving forward. And you find for one brief goddamn moment someone wasn't actually lying to you. And to be fair, he had just taken about two bottles of sleeping pills before laying the truth out to you. But the deathbed confession is often the most sincere. Agreed. Well, when can I use this? Anytime. Anytime. Forward. From now until you pass your brink and fail it. Great. Only your rolling from now. <laughs> It works once, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, it only, I mean, it works until it doesn't work. Ah. So, um, you do get to keep rolling it until it is no longer a thing. Got it. Uh, Boone, mm. there is, there's a lot to digest here. Mm. You've spoken, and you've asked this thing, are you the way? Mm. And many ways you were talking to it and you do hear something talking to you back. It doesn't speak in a language that you understand, but it does seem to have this resonant chant as you stay into it. You don't understand what it is saying, but you do understand its meaning. You are, you are on the cusp of being able to move over, but there's just one last thing to do before you can be accepted. Billy, Eliza, not a bad monolith. <laughs> not a bad monolith indeed. I've been to a lot of festivals. And it's just kind of a thing that happens. It's just a simple shape. It's like a trapezoid, but... Oh, sorry. I went on. It's like a pyramid, but it's tall, mm -hmm. and it's connected into it. And she did a pretty good 3D shape onto it. And it's beautiful. Yeah. Thanks. My pleasure. <laughs> Anything to make us feel human again. I mean, fuck it, right? <laughs> Fuck it. Fuck it. I go over and I hit the button. Hip. Hope. I just need your moment. Sorry. The moment that's on top that you fulfilled, and that's now your dice. Mm -hmm. uh, I go over to the elevator. Mm -hmm. He said it went to the surface, but are there any other stops up or down? Mm. Yes, there are. I'm like, well, y'all, uh, we can't stay here. Wait. I want to try and do what his co-worker did. I mean, what if there's a place we can go? What if, I don't know, something from another planet put these here, and if you just, just ask it, it'll mm. let you in. Take us with you? Let's hold hands. I mean, he said it spoke to the last person. Have you heard it speaking to you? Look, I saw a flash of a door. Right before I hit it. You saw me slap it, right? I also no. saw no door appear. Yeah, neither did I. No, but it but it's the idea of a door. I mean, we don't know how these things work. If nobody else saw it, I mean, maybe it really All right, come over here with me for a second. Okay, come over here. And I go over towards the window and I just motion up towards the ceiling. Oh, yeah. Like, I would hate to see those things turn somebody as delightful as you into some sort of fucking meat puppet, so maybe hold it together for a little while longer. The monolith ain't going nowhere. There's a light shining. Until it's... it ain't. Is the elevator in here with us, or is it outside somewhere? You will have to, you will have to go into the darkness to get to the elevator. Yeah, we're going out there anyway, right? Are there any... Uh, we're keeping this guy company forever. Sorry about that. Flashlights or things like that in here? Mm. Sources of light, they were spelunkers, so... <laughs> <sighs> oh, 
I would like to re-roll. With loyalty? With loyalty. You have one one in which to do so. Because I cannot let these people stumble blindly to their death. No meaningless sacrifices will be made today. As you begin rifling through the area looking for everything you possibly can, trying to find a flashlight to take you through, you suddenly hear and what you took previously advantage for was just the light humming of a generator somewhere and the lights flicker Hmm. the floodlights and then go dark We may not have much time left, y'all, so if there's anything you're going to say, make peace with your maker and say it now. Five dice, five truths. This is the point in the story in which dire consequences can come into place. But that being said, Boone, you do have the first truth. Always, the world is dark. This was inevitable. And it's the truth. This was inevitable. Now that the lights are off, they are coming. There's a window, right? One window? There was a window in the half, yeah. They start to tap at it with their their teeth. They've already made it up to you. Oh, yeah, that was quick. The first few just dropped and then swarmed mm. up to the door. And Got it. They just dropped. Ethan. Oh, wait. Yes, you're the last truth. No, no. you're not. Not yet. Right. The world is dark. <laughs> and the monolith is singing that song. Singing <laughs> the song. Billy. But the door Becca saw is real. Right. Five truths. Five candles. This begins with the sound of carapaces just dropping as you watch like like caterpillars falling from a leaf. They just (laughs) fall down onto the ground and they bounce a little bit, but some of them just curl up and curl back out as some of them, some of them are so big. (laughs) The smaller ones, though, hit first as they drop down and you start hearing them and you hear the sound, the singing, the screeching. I go where Mozart's unconscious. Does his music thing have a flashlight mode? Or it yes. <gasps> I'm sorry, buddy. Yank. Yank. All right. You pull it out and take the headphones. Oh. Take Billy, the headphones. you're a genius. Yeah. Uh, what? Get in as close behind Billy as I possibly can. I think we need to use these and the I close. stamp Oh the yeah, glow stick they're in the unicorn. In mm-hmm. the backpack. Yeah. Corny. You pull all and you light the last three, just mm-hmm. all just cracking, shaking it into it. As you can hear, as the clicking of their tiny, tiny feet just. Ooh. Elevator. I want to reassemble the headlamp, and maybe it's got a little bit more juice, and maybe that dried out when it was separated. All right. You turn it on. Wait, hold on just a sec. I put it on myself. It, it doesn't turn on for the first few times that you click it as you keep hitting it and you click and click and click and click and then finally you click it on once <laughs> and you get a small beam of light. It's dim, but it is something more to light in front of you than it is a direct light of beam. Let's check beam the elevator. Light. Elevator. Does it have an emergency charge? So, <laughs> let's find out, shall we? But you're going to have to get out of the hab and go out with them in order to get to the elevator. Are there any makeshift weapons we can grab on our way? Like, um, I don't know, anything that's like a pole or something like that. Like a leg of a metal table. A knife at this point. 
leg off his cot, anything. If you want weapons, it is a conflict and you will have to get them. Not worth it. Let's just go. Oh, look. Billy tried to find You get an additional and a five or a six succeed. A hope dice. That monolith at two. One, one, no sixes. Okay. Anything left to re-roll? Just that one, one. Is that your brink? No. It's up to you. This is not how we go out. Determination. <laughs> You've just got <laughs> this thing, and you can roll that one. <laughs> Everyone else thinks it's stupid. You get it because we've talked about it before, but I'm clutching the music device in one hand, and that is my whole life. That is the thing that would take you with, that you would take with you to the edge of oblivion, right. which I get from Mozart. Um, that is everything that we are going to get back to. you pop in the headphones and lay into this. You start digging, grasping, looking for anything you can to possibly turn this into a weapon. And that is the moment you still keep your hope dice. This is the moment in which suddenly the hab is just, just ripped apart as something, a tentacle just flops right in and it grasps you from underneath your arm and it yanks you down Hold onto the bed as it pulls you in and you can see this lamprey-like face really? opening up with teeth just serrated across as it pulls you up onto the bed and you barely get your feet onto the side of the wall before it attempts to wrench your body straight into its mouth. Am I able to attack the tentacle with my knife? Just to attempt to free her? There is truths to speak of. And this is the time to do that. Four truths. Four candles. Billy, you can begin. You have failed this conflict now, but what is the truth you wish to speak? This thing has you. It's so close. It's holding on to you, and you have music players. You have this phone in your hand with its flashlight on. Uh, uh, whatever version of an eye it has is somewhere near that mouth. Mm -hmm. That's a truth. Yes, it's my truth. The lower level of this facility has not fallen yet. The lower level has not fallen yet. Okay, that's fine. I'm going to write my truth to you and give it to you. <laughs> no spoilers. No. <laughs> the time for secrets is done. I will tell you. As you shine the light into this thing's face, it has human eyes. Do I recognize them? Next truth. The world is dark. <laughs> but, uh, when the cot was knocked over that she was dragged across, there was a pistol under the pillow. All right. It is a truth. It is spoken. I'm so sorry. We cannot make it to you on this one. But we begin this scene with you as you've been frantically looking around and you put your feet up the pillow that Mozart was laying on his body just flung off of the cot and you see the pillow coming down with it you see a small pistol laid out right there what do you want to do you can hear the metal the screeching the terror and her screams as her feet are laid up against the door go for the gun you're going for the gun mm -hmm. going for the gun you just lay onto it, but there are swathing tentacles everywhere. Shoot this thing if you want <coughs> to free your friend. It's pulling and you can feel the tendon slowly being locked, pulled up as your muscle is just straining against the effort of not being pulled into this thing. <laughs> 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 
three ones. No! Anything left? It's your brink. That's the brink. You can do use it. it. Do it. That's a lot of rerolls. I'll everything. absolutely do it. Can How many can I reroll? You can. Re you have to reroll everything, including the hope dice. But tell me, what is that brink? What is there? You need to activate it. I read your notebook. Why did you write, I knew and told no one? The others can't find out. So it is time for this brink to come out. What do you want to say to Billy as you pull this gun out and just level it against this creature? I shout, I'm so sorry. I knew it was here. <sighs> what the fuck, Ethan? Roll. <laughs> yes. <laughs> One for me, but one success. Excuse me. Does that count as me having witness repentance? <laughs> Do you consider this repentance? He said he was sorry. And he... This is the first game I've had in which three moments mm. have been fulfilled. That's my brink, but it's also my last picture. You get to keep it. Oh. It succeeded. So you get to keep it and continue to activate it. <gasps> but if it, it fails, I'm going to darken, take that hope dice away and darken a candle immediately. All right? So you scream, I'm sorry, I knew it was here as you fire, fire the gun. It. You just watch as just the clip, just pull trigger, trigger, trigger. It's a semi-automatic pistol and you hear it screech as it's <laughs> And you kind of watch as black eye cords <laughs> sprays out everywhere you feel ah. it drip upon you Ugh. as it lays out but you feel also the tentacle just release onto it as its head just <laughs> pulls back mm -hmm. and you watch as its mouth opens for a minute and it sings this song of just screaming it just is it is more a song of pain and complete misery than it is any kind of choir of angels and it pulls out but then you drop to the floor just with the I, thud. I, Bill, are you okay? Side, yeah. With I just, her head up. I just scoop her up with my it. good arm. I, okay I don't now. baby her anything. Like, yeah. we gotta go! Get the stuff. <laughs> Is there anything the left? Stuff, like, spilled out. Shoot it all. No, you didn't shoot it all. You, you unloaded about half the clip. I'm like, get that. Get her bag. I grabbed the, the <laughs> headphones as well. The it's music like a bunch player. of weird miscellaneous looks, almost like medical supplies. But... Right. And just pick it up. And do you go out the front door where they all are, or do you climb through that bridge? Let's go the opening that we're right next to. Yeah. yeah. So the sorry. Bridge. What do you? What are you talking about? What? We can't talk about it right now. Okay. I mean, if not now, but when? That had looked human. It had people eyes. And they were all different colors, but they were all looking at you. I knew this place was down here. But I I didn't know what they were looking for. It just sucks up. People. That was what I was really looking for. I wasn't interested in preppers or doomsdays or. You knew about this place? I knew it was down here. You didn't even tell us we were looking for it? Didn't seem to matter anymore. That's why you suggested hiding out in goddamn caves when monsters were coming out of the earth. <sighs> yeah. Well, we made it this far, right? Let's go. Oh, you thank guys you. honesty so much, yet you couldn't tell the truth to any of us. You all climb out through this broken metal and it scrapes and it hurts because the metal is oh. ripped and it's just disjointed but you get through it and you some of you tumble more than really step out as you land upon the rock on oh. the other side Ow. and you can excellently hear just the sound of whatever is in the front is now oh. in fact you can still see the one that you had shot just it's backing up up to the top of where Fantastic. the possum or the kind of just coming into a corner where it is, but you run and you make all effort to get to the elevator as quick as you possibly can. And I'm trying you... to be pissed at you, but I'd be dead. I, you know, we slammed you mean, the button. Did you mean? Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. The elevator. I'm like, but did you mean that you're sorry? Are you really sorry? Of course I'm sorry. Wouldn't you be? That's good enough for me. And you run towards it and you hit the button and down. you hear it down. Down, go down. You want to? Okay, you hit Love's it. Death and you hear as the whirling and the thing begins to descend. So. <laughs> <laughs> I hit his finger. I mean, all I knew was that there was a secret research 
place. I didn't know what they were looking for. I didn't even connect it until we got down here. Shit, man, you couldn't have assumed they were studying some ancient goddamn hieroglyphic monolith. Hurry, everybody backs together. We can shine our lights outward. So you all turn and put that light out in this tall, just little bit of glow oh. coming in. But you see there are so many of them dozens that have just dropped and it seems like a writhing mass have you ever seen a i don't know a <laughs> <laughs> they are singing <laughs> um hmm. eliza you do i've Feel. got i've got a, something else above it that's okay because this is already happening and as you shining this light forward, you see this writhing mass of bodies that is continuing to move forward in these languages. I pick up the tentacles. Mozart and I put it in my ear. <laughs> and you feel as for a moment the tentacles latch out and they slap onto your hands and they grab a hold of you. Do you resist? No. <laughs> you feel them pull you up as you kind of come into it. Just do one roll They're for They're taking me. it. Just do it. Just one. I want to... <laughs> one and a six. Is that wait? That wasn't enough dice. There was three dice. Yeah, but we're fourteen. One dice was already lost. Oh. Eliza, you feel as these tentacles latch onto you. You put the t and it's this weird moment. You kind of allow yourself to be pulled up into these creatures, and you can actually feel them kind of just taking you, and in a weird way. They are passing you along. They seem to be moving you across. And in the music, you can hear the voices speaking to you. There's not just the classical music that you're laid into anymore. Something is speaking to you and it's saying, it's asking one, one question, one solitary inquiry. Yes or no? Everything in me is just pulsating and writhing. This is, this is a feeling of being alive that I've just felt almost dead for so long. Almost dead for so long. What memories are coming to you now in this time? which you are sitting on a mass of creatures writhing below you as these hands that are these languid tentacles prop you in the air. You seem almost to be a suspended creature amongst blackness. I'm just weightless. I just, it just feels nothing. Just weightlessness, just free, just peacefulness and joy. I see the kids that I used to teach, I see their faces. I do love these kids. So much. But I... Yeah. Some little part inside me that it, it knows that I need to fight to live just has a moment of realization that this is, this is crazy. I need to survive. Yes. Or no. 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 No, no, no. And I start yanking my hands back. All right. You begin yanking and, and kicking and kicking, and you start pulling this thing apart. I will give you your hope dice because that was basically as about as good as getting in a crowd as can ever possibly be. But you start writhing and kicking and pulling into it as you watch as the three of you continue to see Eliza pull up into the air. And now, at the moment, she was blissfully kind of accepting it. But now she's writhing and kicking and moving and screaming. Whoa, 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 what the hell, girl? Ah. <laughs> uh, what do you want to do? Is she physically out of our reach? I mean, you would have to get. She's out in the middle there. of those things. I She's run towards them and put my hand up to get you. in there, but yes. Uh, Let's go get her. You reach out for her and you. I reach back towards you with my other arm that I'm, I'm trying to yank. We free. still have the rope that we made that we drew her out with. Just try and. Cast the rope out to her so that we don't all have Made to go out. Made of the out. fatigues? Yeah, the fatigue knotted up rope. You can throw that. Reach out for her. I, there's a, a weird 
this is the worst, but there's a weird familiar scenario. We've been to so many concerts and you get into so much trouble. <laughs> so there's this weird, it's almost reflex to be like, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. One more for me. Mm. Unless you can re-roll it. Is there anything left? Just the brink. Reroll it. We need it. I mean, you it's have to clear. re-roll everything. Oh no! Don't re-roll. It. Don't re-roll it. <laughs> Keep the success. Yeah. Billy, you hear a voice. This same singing. This choir coming to you. This open invite, and you hear this question again. You hear it. It's the same one. Eliza doesn't know it, but you hear it. Yes or no. Does it sound, do the voices sound like the singing or does this sound like something different? It's different. It's so different. It's as if something calm and soothing is asking you the inquiry. The, the singing is just the screams. It's just the wailing, keening screeches of something. And because you're in the mass of this creature, it is just... Dante's inferno of wailing and screeching. But this is a dark, soothing voice that seems to punctuate onto there as you reach her hand out and you can touch, you can feel Eliza's warm flesh against her cold touch. And it is saying yes. I squeeze your hand as hard as I possibly can. Yes. Yes. And you said no. Said no. Billy. Eliza is unwrapped in this process, and you grab and you pull her with all of your might as you wrench her straight out from underneath this crowd, and it seems. seems to let go as it drops Eliza to the ground but you it picks you up and it almost as if exchanges you and it pulls you up into its veins as if you switch no a place as you come into it and you uh, feel the body start to pull and pull you in and you are disappearing you are going voice? deep into the crowd what of the these creatures And she's still on the other end of the the Can we rope. See her? Do you she have the rope? She does have the rope, and she's holding on to it. She's being pulled away. Uh, we try to pull her back. All three of us. Where exactly? So we are. Did we make it into the elevator? The elevator is coming down, and at this point, between all of this exchange, it has made its way down, and you can hear the eerie scraping of the metal as the whole door slides open. Who are but you? Billy is out there. But we have the other end of the rope. Yeah. I'm like, get on the elevator. Yeah, we back into the elevator. Into the elevator. Grab the dice and pull her into. My intention is for us to escape. I understand. Six. Six. <laughs> <laughs> Billy, as you feel this thing pass into you, it you hear it say. It answers your question. I am you. And that's the moment in which the rope tugs a hold of you and you hear and feel the resistance of the tentacles just pulling against you (laughs) as it clicks and pops and you feel something, one of the mouths just grasp a hold of your foot as almost it's just like something snapped in them and they reached up and they grasp a hold of your foot and you feel the tearing of flesh <sighs> as the teeth are wrung up against your leg and you no. but you pull and you pull and you feel as she kind of comes across and all of the creatures just descend upon all of you just at once <clears throat> but you pull onto it and you slam the gate in front of you as you hold it up and Billy is laid in blood is running down your legs uh, let's moment. use the rope as a tourniquet tourniquet and you watch as this thing 
that it starts to go. Hold on, it, it, it spoke to me. And I know, me too. creatures are laying into there, and you can see they're climbing on top, and they mm. are not letting go at this point. In fact, the tentacles are still coming in every once in a while. Use your knife. Boom. I'm like, uh, if it gets one of us, you be ready with that thing. Yeah, okay, fine. I'm very much like head down, kind right. of like <laughs> near, near her. And only if one can really sit on top Stop of her. Stop her bleeding. Yeah, she's doing a tourniquet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think All there's right. some gauze in the bag. I'm trained in first aid. Oh, you would be, right? Teach me. Early childhood education. So. Part of the degree. You so I have skills. You uh, continue to descend in darkness. It spoke to me. It said, I'm you, and it asked me a question. What was the question? Yes or no. What did you it answer? asked me that, too. Well, I said, yes, of course, I want to know more. What did you I say? Said, I said, no. I mean, I almost gave in, but I knew I, it was survival or, or just giving up. Oh. Uh. At this point, one of the tentacles is starting to feel bold enough, and Eliza, it reaches for you again. It tries to grasp a hold of your neck this <gasps> time and pulls itself as it blanks you back against the grate and starts to choke you with all of its effort. Oh, I'll empty the gun into it. Okay, empty the gun into it. I'm hope dice. Ooh, that's your hope dice. That's, that's my hope dice. dice. Let go, let go, let go, let go! Yeah! <laughs> Two sixes, wow. You gotta talk to them! Uh, Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I haven't been rolling it for narrative control, but by all means, go ahead. All right. uh, elaborate for me. Well, I empty the clip into it. Okay. Let go, let go, let go, let go, let go. Until Fire there's no it. more. And you just go until the slide just pulls back, mm -hmm. and you well, do, you, you hear yank it. her out of the way. <laughs> Does the what? tentacle break off, and I can use it to whip it the other way? No, it just comes off. It just, like, lets up your neck, but not before you come back and you feel just the bruising on your neck oh. at this point as it literally- Oh, and ichor everywhere. Yeah, it's just black and, and just everywhere oh. around you. Oh. Sorry. Oh. And uh, <laughs> you hear nothing for the moment as you continue to descend down. down. Are you okay? Oh, yeah, thank you. I want to- Thank you so much, you said nothing. I want to inspect the tentacles, see like what f manner of skin is it got? Is it human flesh? Is it slimy? Is it crocodilian? Well, uh, he unloaded the gun into it. The tentacle was not, it wasn't like he shot it and shot with a bullet, took the tentacle down. He just, it just went away with the process. There wouldn't be anything to inspect, oh. unfortunately. Oh my uh, god, I can, no it's more, hard to breathe. No more bullets. I now have a ridiculously short club. Yeah. <laughs> it's better than nothing. I guess. I might find a spare clip for the day. Uh, that thing. Did it can you see? Well, it looks bad, but can you breathe? Man, those things can squeeze. I actually want to inspect um, Billy's wounds. I'm specifically looking for anything like if there was teeth broken off, signs of venom, any sort of infection, because we've proven they can do something to people. So uh, that's I'm right. Where that. did you say you come from? Mm. I am trained in the art of survival. Well, you've got I don't tell her that's what I'm kit. doing. I'm just, I'm just right. right. <laughs> well, you look, you look at her leg. I'm gonna notice if you're inspecting the foot. You can, mm -hmm. you can see that she's been flayed. And most of the skin is off at this point. Ah. You're not gonna want to look at that. And it's bleeding. But I look at it. The adrenaline <laughs> is indiced. It, it's just pumping through you right now. But okay. there is not much left on your lower calf right now. I'm gonna take you, one you, of the painkillers. You, you got more of what you gave <laughs> is that a me? special pain killer, or <laughs> that's just the regular kind of? We just wanted you, to calm you, you down. How you, you doing? More than aspirin. Don't worry about me. Your arm's half off. Your foot's fucking gone. Take whatever you got in here. Yeah. Damn. It takes. But seriously, where are you from? <sighs> I'm from. Arkansas. I came out here to the desert because land was cheap and there was no one to bother us. And I had been stockpiling things for this exact thing. And like I said, when this monolith, this fucking monolith came up to the ground and destroyed our stockpile on day fucking one of the apocalypse. I got out with what I had in my bag and him in tow and we came to the caves and now I know why. And here we are. Who was we? I mean, me and mine, I had my family, my wife, my children, some of my cousins, some just friends of like-minded individuals. Wait, where are all of them? 
The same place all of your kinfolk are now. Nowhere. Right. Sorry. I just sure as shit hope that's not them out there with them human eyes. Maybe having that thing rip up through our land was the best thing that ever could have happened to our homestead. Nah, I don't think there's any good news. I think we're all completely screwed. And with that, boom, you feel it as it impacts onto the bottom level. I do help her up. Thanks. And you I help you limp because uh, yeah. still got a broken foot. I'm still got a broken foot. Actually, I'm gonna hop along. Should help her limp. Because <laughs> I, I can't fight uh -huh. anymore. Uh, you, uh, you fine. kind of you feel at this point, actually, what you thought was the bottom <laughs> was actually the fact that the elevator stopped because it ran out of whatever reserve power was still running through it on the grating. Terrific. And as you attempt to open it, you actually look at the grounds at least another 15 at least as far as you can see maybe 20 feet below you from and that's where the next door out the next level is well it's where the presumably the bottom where this thing was going but it came up short is what I'm trying I, to say uh, do I is there this I mean I'm presumably on all sides there's no way for me to drop anything like if I wanted to drop my glow stick to let it go to the rest you of the could. way could I do that yeah you could do I'll that. drop my glow stick all right, so you put your glow stick and you watch it fall 5, 10, 15, 20 feet as it impacts. And you kind of see it fall on a concrete platform. So but the platform not covered in tentacly bodies. Yeah, no screeching, no running. When the no. <laughs> and you see it kind of falling on rock towards the side more than just flat concrete as far as the glow is concerned. I got to tell you, we got to get out of here. And right now, I think the most qualified climber is you. And this rope ain't 20 feet long. Okay. Okay. Is there a hatch at the top of the elevator car? Mm -hmm. Okay. And this, it's, all, it's all just a metal grate. It's like a mesh open. Metal car. So, uh, can I get a boost? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Step on his knee or something. Yeah. Uh, and I pull myself up. I work out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is there like some sort of turn crank? Maybe I can, um, like, manually use I'll it like a pulley. It down, maybe. Yeah. Sure. Well, you look, there is ropes that are pulled up into it, but they just seem to be descending. It's not a manual line. Mm. There is um, four beams that hold the shaft at that point, but there's no ladder that takes it up or down <laughs> the stage. So I can shimmy down a, a beam... Or you give me your knife, and I cut this rope, and we fall 20 feet. Those ain't good odds. What's it going to be? Uh, I hand the, the knife, you know, <laughs> flip it around. I'm like, embrace yourselves best you can. Probably best to lay on the floor, I guess. Yeah, I think yeah. you should lay down. Yeah, hang on tight up there. You guys are going to go up and then slam back down, and it's not going to feel good. It's made of great, right? Can I hold myself from the ceiling so that I'm hanging? Absolutely. Um, I'm actually going to hold on to one of the beams as I cut with one hand, so I'm not actually on the car, right. so it'll fall, and then I'll presumably climb down if it works out. Six, five, and six, five, and six. I got two successes. <laughs> well done. I told you we were going to be the first people to survive ten candles. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you say that? Oh, I'll take my hope, please. Why did you say that? <laughs> uh, oh, there can be no negative repercussions to any of this. You begin cutting. Like, watch as you kind of get into it. And you finally, at some point, snap. And you watch as Hold on. lifts up. Give him a little warning. At first, it just kind of onto one side and then you hear and then you fall you fall and you all you 
like you said, you feel weightless for a moment as you hold on to it, and you two laying on the ground just lift up ever so slightly before, boom! Uh, you all impact onto the ground. Uh, I'm still hanging onto the beam. Way, and you're holding onto the beam with everything you possibly can. So I start, uh, you know, just like... Small I'm shimmy. hugging it. I'm little shimmies down. It hurts. Everything is bruised. You just <laughs> fell straight into it. <coughs> and oh. it is, yeah, dust. The weight has just, the, the oh. air has just been kicked out of you at this point. But you settle for the moment. And it worked. worked. Yeah, it worked. How are you up there? I'm good. How are you guys down there? Oh, we're all, we're just what? awesome. Thanks. The day's getting better by the moment. <laughs> Careful. What's what down can here? I say? I've got joy. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, uh, Ethan, you look around, and the little light that the 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 stick at this point has to offer is just not giving you much. It's just a little bit, but it is hot down here. Oh, it is down warm. Down and oh, it must be really deep. Very deep. And it is almost suffocatingly warm. But you... Um, Do I need the key card to get some... Out? I haven't seen... You haven't I found I, a door yet. Maybe, right. we, maybe we can close the door. <laughs> and, uh, well, it's a whole shaft coming down at this point. I will say... just so impressed <laughs> honestly i'm just so amazed on how many of these two dice rolls we're making at this stage <laughs> um even the six even that hope dice didn't matter it was a five and a six uh yeah. Yeah. uh-oh did you hear a voice so, <laughs> Eliza, as you kind of descend down, you can see white, red, glowing, eerie light that seems to be around a bend. What you've come is into kind of a small, open area where the shaft is, but there are several kind of caverns that peek off in different directions, and one of them seems to have a red glow that seems to be radiating from it. That's light. We should go that way. And you kind of climb down. It was so good. I'm not going to make you see if you fall and slap your face onto the ground. <laughs> as tempting as that is. You kind of come back and put your feet onto it and you hop down. And, um, yeah, you see your friends all mangled on the bottom of the, of the grate. They help work. them up. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Nicely I'm done. I'm very small, so it's ah, very hard. Ah, I pull it very oh, hard to get them standing. Oh, it takes oh, everything to take the mangled grate and ah, basically oh. pull it open at this point, and it doesn't really give much, just enough for you to all squeeze through mm. ever so barely. You see anything on your climb? Did I see anything on my climb? Just the, just the red glowing light coming from one of the cave entrances. I see a way that looks interesting. Well, start limping that way. Better that Come this darkness. far. Start hobbling in that direction. Yeah. yeah. So like this is the world's worst three-legged race. <laughs> I picked to help Billy because the flayed calf is pretty. Uh, pretty awful. Grotesque. It's grotesque. Thank you. Although when I checked, I saw no signs of teeth, poison, anything other than just Skin ripped gone. up meat. Ripped up meat. But now it's got gauze on it. <laughs> um. As you begin to come around the corner, you are limping through, and there's the radiating light, and you've got your glow sticks, but you're mostly keeping your head down as you kind of move forward with every last amount of strength you possibly can. And that's when you hear the moaning. Moaning. Just the deep, resonant moaning. And as you step forward and you continue to look, you see that the red light is a small river of magma that's pushing through this causeway into it, into the actual mountainside. It's just like a small bed mm. of lava that seems to be rolling through and there is it's illuminating something. Above it you can see a writhing mass of moving flesh bodies that are there 
heads lolling, arms reaching out, an amalgamation of bodies all pressed together, moaning and reaching out and crying in dismay as they reach out towards you. Ethan, this is when on your foot you feel a hand grab your ankle and squeeze the bone underneath you. I stab at it to free him. And you look down and you see the floor, bodies all over Human the floor. Body. Yes. People. People. Uh, uh, I'm gonna use my last, I'm gonna use my brink. Okay, your brink. What is your brink? They've seen your faith and know it to be a lie. Only sacrificing a sinner will bring redemption. And I know what she has done. He repented. She did not. Roll. Oh. <laughs> did you write that, Amy? That's what he wrote for me. Oh. He wrote. I haven't read it. Although, so dramatically, when I see things pulling at him, I intentionally push her towards them as I'm pulling on him. Your hope dice is gone. Yes. This is gone. Oh, yeah, we're losing hope. <laughs> shove Billy basically can towards and Ethan you feel this hand grasping on your leg as it's pulling you down and attempting to move into it and it's odd I mean you were stepping on stone you were this is impossible this was rock you this was, was rock. solid earth I know it was yes and it was now it, this can't be happening yeah it's it not happening this this no point it must be the fumes or something uh something it's is affecting real. your mind but it is holding on to you with every step and it is pulling you and it is squeezing your bones as it drags both of you and and Boone Billy you just you fall forward and the hands just lift themselves up and they grasp a hold of you and they caress you and they move your hands across your shoulders and across your desiccated leg <laughs> and they rub upon your flayed flesh and you scream. It's so painful and they seem to languish in your scream as they pull you forward and it drags you and pulls you towards the lava. No. And Billy. towards your friends as you gaze out to them. And Ethan, you kind of see, because Billy is laid on the floor and you have your hands around your ankle at the moment, you kind of see Billy just being pulled in. And Billy, there's something like you just saw this boon, this man threw <gasps> you down. Why? No. Billy. As I'm pulling Ethan. Don't do it. What you? No. I'm all like, no. you, you sought forgiveness. Let me go. Hold on to it, and Billy, you feel the warm embrace of the hot magma clasp a hold of your leg as your leg is disseminated and it disintegrates into nothing. Uh. Flames start to erupt from the side of your body as you are engulfed into this liquid stream as all of the bodies around you begin to howl and wail as their arms laid up and they embrace you as they pull you into the earth. I had to do it, he made me do it. <laughs> she has perished in the lake of fire. Why did you do that? Boone, what did you do? What did you do, this Boone? What did you do? This place is hell. This is a place for sinners. It is not a place for you who are redeemed. Let's run, let's run. We have to run. You yeah. run. There's three truths to speak before this ends. Before we get into this next place, there are three candles three truths that need to be spoken. Normally, Billy would have the first truth, but in this circumstances, I will have to take it since she is no longer here. The first truth is the world is dark. The second truth is Boone is overcome by zealous fever and knows what he has to do. Eliza, you're next. You get the second truth. Uh, the world is dark and... The cavern is starting to crumble a little bit. Uh, the one around the lava. Yeah. With all the people and all the lava flowing. 
starting to crumble behind us. Hi, Ethan. You have the last one. The world is dark. And the cavern is coming down around us. Yes. But there is another light. There is another light. We pick up this right as Boone is yelling, this is hell, this is redemption, you are the saved, and he, she was the sinner as he runs towards both of you. Do I know roughly where the monolith must be? Because I knew where it was. I knew where the elevator was, so roughly where it must be. Yeah. I go towards the monolith. All right. I'm like, mm. I understand now. I understand right. why it is here. <laughs> I understand what we must do, brother and sister. I understand. You saw it. You saw it. That was the lake of fire. I know what we have to do. I know what we have to do. And I go towards the And monolith. you run towards He's the running monolith. towards it? The monolith, yeah. Uh, I mean, roughly directly. I don't know how close it is. Where it could be, but Eliza, Ethan. I was already taken off, and I didn't look back when I saw him push my friend, and I saw her go in, and there was no saving her. I just sprinted. And I am... Um, Any direction? Away from him? Uninjured and fast runner. Away from him, and uh, I think also... Down the monolith, if that's where the light is. I went towards the light, the other light. The other light. Okay. It would be the same direction that Boone is going if it was the light where the monolith is. I also want to see the monolith again there. I had things I wanted to... My legs are uninjured, and I am trying to bring him along with me. So I, 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 I'm not trying to leave him. I'm well... Not <laughs> I left him. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let him help me along. Okay. I'm not happy about it, but... And he is, but let's he's see dragging the, you. So let's see where the light is, and it's easier to go with him than it is to resist right now. So let's see where the light is, and uh, you, see where this goes. Per your truth, there is another light, and Eliza, you sprint for it ahead of Ethan, ahead of Boone. He seems so focused and minded at the moment. He's crazy. And you run towards it, and you do see, in the midst of the cavern, a black, sheer face that is laid out in front of you. And right in front of it, two <laughs> creatures as they just sit there almost like guardians, mm. protectors of this form. And it stands in front, and they don't immediately go for you, but they stare. And they turn their head with their multi segmented human eyes as they look towards you. And you can tell you're being judged. I don't move, I just wait. I want, I want to see if other commotion heading down <laughs> the you, tunnel you <laughs> distracts <wait>. them. <laughs> and the commotion comes as Boone and Ethan. Yeah, the entire time I'm like, oh, it is written what my enemies meant for ill. God has turned to my good. You didn't know why you brought us down here, but it was all part of the plan. Don't you see, Ethan, to be delivered for deliverance? As soon as they turn their many eyes to him, I start to swing back. And when I lay eyes on the monolith, uh, I'm like, ha, 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 I have done what was asked to have things revealed to me. I have done as was requested. I believe I lost one. You did lose that. Thank oh, you. Don't we get and three? And we have three. And three. Right. You get these two with it. Okay. You speak to it and you say, I have done. Why? Because we had lost a couple. New scene. New, New scene. scene. I understand. Three dice. I understand. Sorry. Three candles. Yes. I be, I. Basically, as I get close, as I see her, I do sort of let go of you when I'm in earshot. Oh, good. Yeah, I don't, because I'm like, ha, 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 you will all bear witness to the revelation that apparently is not coming. <laughs> so you, you Funny know, that. you <laughs> scream, this mm -hmm. is the revelation. Mm -hmm. I have done what it needs to be redeemed. And you hear a voice pierce into your mind as you come closer and you see the creatures who have turned their eyes away from you, but now turn towards you and they look at you and they gaze upon you and they say you have been tested <laughs> and you have done as requested and again this whole time you yeah. hear this English speaking towards you yeah. but in the background it is this do we hear anything or is it speaking, no, speaking. only to him and only he can hear. And he is slowing forward and mm -hmm. moving towards these creatures. Uh -oh. I draw my weapon and I oh, drop it because I will not need it anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. I pick it up. <laughs> and you, uh, you come forward and you hear it as the voice. You have done as we've requested, and your faith has been 
tested. You failed. And you feel as the arms lip around no. you and grab up. Ah, you. didn't. And they lift you up. I, it was meant to be this entire time. Righteousness is not sacrifice of others. Your choice has been made. Now bathe. And you feel as both of them <laughs> grab a hold of you and one of them clasps upon your head and slowly starts to pull you in yes. to its maw as each muscle beheld forward. A ride on a pale horse in a lake of fire. And you are consumed in front of both Eliasmith and Ethan. You watch as Boon is basically lifted up and one seems to be forcing its maw into the other as your body is just collapsed inside. And <clears throat> thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'm gonna have to ask you to leave my table. Mm. You want to go to him? Yeah, okay. Come here. <laughs> two candles. Two truths. The world is dark. Boone normally would have the first, but I will instead speak. The cave that you discussed starting to collapse behind you. A boulder has crumbled and is now blocking your only exit. There is one way forward. The boulder that fell blocking the exit is also pinning the tail of one of the two creatures. Excellent. <laughs> two truths. Oh, that's two. That's two. <laughs> mm, two dice. Eliza, as you mentioned, one of the rocks, the rock that is blocking your pathway, has ostensibly fallen upon this creature, and you hear as its carapace cracks as you watch its black eye core split, but it doesn't seem to care. It doesn't scream in pain like when you shine the light on it or when anything else. It's more just like a defeated cry of a dying creature, something that has starved itself for years and is now finally deciding that it's okay to let go as it lays upon the grasp and ground, not dead, but not moving. Ethan. You said there was one path forward. Which direction is that? Toward the monolith? Yeah, there is a world in which if you want to try to get back out through the boulder, it could be another spelunking adventure. Let's go. <laughs> I have to try something first. I want to. What are you doing? I want to try and get to the door. That I want to see if the monolith Eliza, is its own doing? way out. We can I go. grab Ethan. And I pull him towards it, and I go to slam it, and then I stop my hand right before, and I, I think about envisioning what's inside of the monolith. As you begin to speak to it, you open your mind up, and you begin to picture what's inside of it, and you hold on to him, and you hear something in your mind, and it says simply, such hatred, such joy, but such hatred. Roll, roll and be judged. Tell me what you wish to tell it back. I wish to say, let us out of here, let us go to safety. I know you can. Why are, Why have you brought this judgment upon us? We are pure of heart. That's not, that's not sixes. So selfish. So trite. 
No. You are not. What's happening? Worthy. I... You may have been, but no longer. And you feel your hand press into the monolith. In fact, you feel your whole arm lay up <laughs> into the whole shoulder. And you feel what are you doing? as your arm I don't know. stuck. And you attempt to pull on it, but it's like solid stone. And you can't move. There's nothing. Everything is laid out. In fact, you feel this pull slowly start to crack. And then you hear your bones begin to break <laughs> as your body is mashed. And slowly, pieces of yourself out. You can pull on her, you can, you pull on her with all of your might, you attempt to wrench her <clears throat> out, but the forces are so strong and each minuscule millimeter by millimeter pulls it in until oh, your chest like begins to collapse <gasps> and you feel your no. weight crush no. as you fall limp. Ethan, you watch as her body, now her heart, and her body crushed, and you can hear the cracking of each bone as her body is slowly pulled into the monolith and finally is pulled in. And you stand there, and these things are just looking at you. You don't seem to have any emotion, but they just seem to be staring. It's pity, maybe it's righteousness, but they don't do anything other than watch you and the bloodied, broken pile of blood that is now on the floor in front of the monolith. Eliza, Rebecca, thank you so much. I almost made it. I almost was the first one to win. Leave me here. One candle. One truth. This is the final scene. Ethan. You were miles under the ground. You. tried to do something good for the world, and instead you watched as everyone in front of you was consumed and killed and crushed in front of you. These things are not going after you, but nor do you see any indication that the monolith is doing anything but just being there. What is going on in your mind? What are you thinking? It was all for nothing. I couldn't have stopped this even if I had known the truth. Trying to find the answer didn't get us anywhere. Truth is not in and of itself the point but it did get you here. Maybe right. it's the looking that's the important part, not the actual finding of the truth. Maybe it's how we conduct ourselves on the search rather than what we do at the end of it. These are the thoughts that stay with you as you find your final hours buried deep under the earth with the company of monsters. Thank you so much for playing. That is Thank the you, end Ivan. of our story. Thank you, friend. Thank you. I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. In the company of monsters, it's a good episode title, I think. There's only one last thing left to do. 
and that is to listen to the messages of our departed characters. Good night. Hey, 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 this is Zinnia. DJ Violet. My name is Billy Morris. And this has been a weird time. You know, after everything that happened at the concert, we just went on the run. We're doing good, though. Uh, I made it. Eliza made it. Um, man, talking to Mike's is like the only thing I'm supposed to be good at. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess we just all wish we had more time, right? Some things we all wanted to, to do. But the moon looks crazy. How about that, huh? I think if we could just find some more people, we just some good people. I don't know. I miss my equipment. Whoever's listening to this, pretend it sounded really cool. Okay, bye. If you can hear this, then I'm probably dead. When I was alive, my name was Ethan Daly, and I spent my life as a journalist searching for truth. I won prizes for it, awards. I patted myself on the back for my ingenuity in matching fidelity to fact. And now, I know that it didn't matter, that there is no truth, or even if there is, it can't save us. My name is Boone, just Boone. I've been preparing my whole life to be here to witness this glorious conclusion of humanity. This divine retribution that we have all brought on our own heads, saint and sinner alike. I want you to know though that I was right. My daddy and his daddy were right. And when the end came, I was prepared. And I survived. And I will continue to survive until there is no more. But, oh, brother, sister, who hears this, I call upon you to repent. Because if you have survived to this point, it is on your head to help shepherd in a new and better world free from vanity and greed and pollution and hatred. I go out to greet the end with a smile. When it started, there were 400 people all around me. We were all dancing and enjoying ourselves and each other and substances. And <laughs> many of those people were my friends. They're all dead now. There's so many beautiful souls with so much light and energy to share, and I watched them all sucked underground before my eyes. I used to teach pre-K. I freaking loved those kids so much, and I can't imagine a single one of those sweet little babes made it through the first night. Four years old. I keep seeing their sweet faces. I wanted to inspire them, inspire their young minds to be full of light and, and laughter and life. I wanted to shape future leaders and future givers and healers and believers in, in things greater than themselves. I, I just wanted to dance, be surrounded by strangers, and feed off their energy. And I don't know if I'll ever see more than a few people ever again. Everyone is dead. All hope is lost. <laughs>